For almost 70 years, America's National Park of Speed, Road America, has been challenging some of the best drivers, uh, engineers, tyre technicians and race teams in the world. This four-mile circuit has got a little bit of everything, and the surrounding area is quite simply stunning. The track opened in 1955 and was built to emulate the rises and falls of the local roads, which had been where the racing took place in the late 40s and early 50s. And since then, it's changed barely at all. Lots of investment in the facility, including a full repave in October and November last year. But all of those little nuances were mapped by laser to make sure that the character of this 14-corner track remained intact. Hello, everybody. I'm John Hindorf, and along with Jeremy Shaw and Shay Adam, we'll be taking you through the action this afternoon and our final piece of racing enjoyment for the IMSA Sports Car Racing Weekend, which has been absolutely wondrous here. A record crowd here at Road America. Haven't seen these kind of numbers since the late 1970s. The RV overflow parking was overflowing. There is literally not a place to park up around this circuit. And the vast majority of this huge and knowledgeable crowd has stayed here for this Sunday afternoon race. It's the Michelin Pilot Challenge moving towards the end of its season, Jeremy Shaw. That's right, John. Yeah, this is round seven out of ten for the Michelin Pilot Challenge this season. So we the nitty-gritty stage in the championship. From here, uh, we'll go to VIR, then to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway uh, Grand Prix Road Circuit. That's going to be exciting addition to the schedule for this year. And then finish it off, as usual, at Michelin, Michelin Road, Raceway Road, Atlanta. In uh, the GS division, Kenny Murillo and Christian Shimjak will start seventh today. Got a pretty good lead of 170 points over Robbie Foley and Vin Barletta who start farther down the field. But in TCR, though, well, it, it couldn't be much uh, tighter. Just 10 points separating the uh, two Hyundai of the Brian Hurd Autosport team. Mason Philippi and Mark Wilkins, who will be uh, driving this weekend in car number uh, 33, they are just uh, 10 points excuse me, number 98 car leads away, Messon Philippi and Mark Wilkins. They lead by just 10 points from the sister car, number 33 of Harry Gottsacker, uh, the pole sitter, and Robbie Wickens. We have lost a car in the TCR category already this weekend, though, due to a lack of spare parts. That would be for LA Honda World and the FL5. That is the new Honda Civic TCR that we have running out on the track. The red one is racing. That is the one this weekend for Mike Lamara and Ryan Eversley, car number 37. But 73 endured some damage during qualifying to an upright that they can't replace due to a big crash that happened a little bit earlier on in the year. They are very, very fine on spare parts. So the 73 has been withdrawn for Matt Pombo and Dr. Will Talley, but we do still have one car to cheer for from LA Honda World. Meanwhile, not everybody is in the places that we expected them to be, Shay. No, we've got two cars that had to move to the back of the grid as a result of post-qualifying infractions, one of which was planned. The 64 Team TGM, big crash for Owen Trinkler in practice, resulting in him going off in turn five, the right side of the car being badly damaged and irreparable at the track. So they rolled out the spare car, and Owen took it out in qualifying, which was the next session, to shake it down. They've changed their starting driver, planned it from the beginning, meaning that Ted Giovannis is starting the race from the back of the pack, but he's not there alone because after another brilliant qualifying effort from Jensen Altman, the McCombie McAleer Ford Mustang has once again been thrown out after qualifying in tech. This time it was for being underweight. The first time happened at the Detroit race, but it means that Jensen now starts at the back of the field. All of these drivers in all of the classes, minimum drive time of 40, 40 minutes. So the pit lane should get pretty busy around then for the GS cars. For TCR, I'm expecting one stop only about halfway through. Yeah. Uh, fair point, well made, Shea. Thank you. Shea Adam down in the pit lane. Before that, Jeremy Shaw and Major John Heindel in the IMSA Global Broadcast Centre. We're about three or four cars lengths further uh, down the start-finish line than the, the start-finish line itself. So beyond that, and we're already getting side-by-side -side formation 
as they come to the line. Take a deep breath now. It might be the last, last opportunity you get to have one as the BMW G82 GT4, Robert McGuinness. What a brilliant qualifying performance. All right, good Phil Guerras. He was my pick for pole position. He failed uh, by three quarters of a second. That was a huge margin that McGuinness had over the rest of the field. That was, ye that was yesterday. This is today. Two hours on the clock. The Road America 120 is green and racing in Wisconsin at America's National Park of Speed. And immediately the pole center, Robert McGuinness, pulls onto the ideal racing line. Drivers left, cuts right to the apex, the center of the corner, and he has got three or four cars at length already. Now the TCRs come to the line of the two Hyundais. Well, I'm not sure whether that was breaking ranks there before they got to the line. That will be being looked at. You are not allowed to change lanes before you have gone across the stripe. That will be being looked at. It's standard operational procedure to check the tape at the start. That shows my age, doesn't it? To check the start video, at least. Fantastic start for Robert McGuinness, but not the only... Oh, and before we finish that thought, there's a turnaround for the McLaren right in the middle of turn five. And I was about to say there's going to be people unsighted. Carnage down at turn five. This will be a full course caution straight away. Three or four cars involved. Masterful avoidance by the TGM Aston Martin down there. And that was... Ted Giovannis that was at the back of the field. Here comes the TCR field having to pick their way uh, through the crash site. So the number 69, Aston Martin, uh, excuse me, the uh, McLaren has gone around, was pushed around. We have the safety vehicles on site. Two other vehicles involved there. Start is under review. Cars involved are the Number 83, bright green Porsche, the 09 automatic uh, accelerating uh, automatic Aston Martin, excuse me, uh, and the 69 McLaren, all involved in that melee. Uh, really, the most, I mean, all unfortunate, to be honest. Glenn McGee involved for the, uh, excuse me, the 69 car involved there, turned around and had nowhere to go and basically just sat there waiting almost for the inevitable hit and it did come jeremy it did unfortunately really great shame there no, no, number 83 car tom collingwood shares shares that car with spencer papelli they've had a uh, a nice consistent season they are third in points coming into this round so this will be a huge blow to their championship aspirations and spencer papelli well, he never seems to have much luck here no. at Road America. I think he's, I seem to remember, he's run out of fuel twice on the final laps in different races here. Might be, might even be three times, actually, something silly. Uh, unfortunately, well, that ain't going to happen again, most likely, because I think that car is going to be out of the race on the first lap, which is even more unfortunate. Ramin Abdul uh, of Ahabi as well for automatic racing in the 0 9. Don't think that car's going uh, any further. No, and he's out of the McLaren. Yeah. And the number 83. What a shame. And that car with nowhere to go. All the drivers are out. That's the good news. That's the very good news. But this is going to be quite a clean up here. Um, in fact, actually, I lie because Ramin is not out of his car yet, but he has been spoken to. Don't read anything into that. There's a very strict protocol that goes on for the AMR safety crew to chat to the drivers to assess their condition in the car. And Abdul is now out after being assessed by the MR safety team. Mm -hmm. um, the old days of what uh, EMTs used to call uh, in those days, scoop and shoot, grab the person and get them away from the incident. That is all gone. It is assess, assess, assess. So it was actually, oh, it, was. it was bar billiards, wasn't it, down through the corner because there was a double push uh, onto that McLaren before it got spun around. And I think it was the other Aston Martin, actually, the multicolored car that started that, the uh, green and yellow machine. Big, big impact. And Jensen Altman somehow getting around. 
uh, and also Ted Giovannis doing a pretty good job as well. In the middle of the pack, it's absolutely unsighted, and it all starts with the multicolored. So it's Aston Martin on no, Aston Martin onto yeah. uh, McLaren, Jeremy, I reckon there. So yeah. that was a proper billiards plant. It really was. And it, what's weird about that is Rory van der Stern, number 19, Aston Martin, it was he that made contact with the rear of the McLaren having contact from behind to push him into the McLaren. Mm -hmm. But he'd made a brilliant start. He, he went round the outside of turn one and went from, uh, what was he, sixth on the grid to third or fourth going around the first corner. Then he lost a position or two down the back straight. And I'm not quite sure how then Alex Filsinger got in the McLaren, who had started in the eighth position, got up that far that far up. He must have made a, a brilliant run through the through turn three most likely I suppose because he didn't seem to be there in turn one so, so uh, was that, unfortunately it's all gone awry so was that Patrick Gallagher in the other accelerating performance Aston that started that off that is the the multicolored car it is um, it all went on ahead of the Toyota and again brilliant reflexes and reaction from Marco hey, Galante yeah, he's a rally driver he's gonna have re uh, re re reflexes aren't gonna be the problem <laughs> he's <laughs> Got the reflexes oh, of man, a cat on energy drink. Yeah, it was Patrick Gallagher in the second of the accelerating uh, performance so Paul cars. Paul Sparta that just skirted oh. around the outside of the McLaren and right behind Paul, I think. No, it wasn't Paul. It was it was Frank Depew in actual fact. Yeah. Uh, and uh, right behind Frank Depew there, I think was um, well everybody else. Everybody else basically. It, there was an inevitability about yeah. that because although that isn't a completely blind corner, you are, first lap, you are so obviously completely uh, taken by what's going on around you, i.e. you're battling for position in one of the toughest braking areas on the circuit, downhill, cold tyres, first lap of the race, and then just beyond the apex, you are confronted with the McLaren sideways and that is very very unfortunate indeed for those involved none of the cars that are parked on the circuit and not going anywhere none of those actually involved in starting that accident so the Stoner car care Aston Martin being the first one to be moved the 83 Porsche Cayman still waiting for that car to be moved as well Tom Collingwood yeah. out of that car so just a quick one Alex Fieldsinger in the McLaren spun around with contact from behind Ramin Abdul Vahabi uh, having arrived on the scene with cars going either side with literally nowhere to go in the 09 Aston Martin and then Thomas Collingwood next on the scene in the bright green and grey Porsche solid contact with the left hand side of the parked Aston kicked that car up in the air one of the odd, odd things about that is that the McLaren started in the, in the eighth position uh, and the two Aston Martins one of them started in six and the other one in fourth um, and it was the two asses that hit the back of the McLaren. So was, that was kind of weird. I can't, I, I'm not quite sure how Alex Wilson managed to make such a fantastic start. And unfortunately, it, unfortunately it was all for him, he did so. If he'd yeah. been a bad start, he'd probably been okay. That's really ironic, isn't it? What a shame. Uh, uh, it will surprise you not at all to hear that that incident is under review. Um, now, notwithstanding the fact that the that cars stranded down there uh, will not be able to resume uh, none of those will be assessed a penalty i'm fairly certain of that what race control will be looking at is the start of the incident and it was that domino effect that push effect from way back uh, in the braking area that started that chain reaction effectively like a newton's cradle or a uh, as I say, a billiard shot where you plant one ball onto another, onto another. And unfortunately, the cars involved are all 
innocent parties there. Yeah, and a lot of fluid spilled on the racetrack. This is going to be a lengthy clean-up to get those three cars out of the way and then clean up all that mess that is uh, at the front end of the Porsche went up in the air, having made contact with the back of the Aston Martin, I think it was. The heat it was it, indeed, it? yeah. And uh, all the radiators and what have you in the front of that Porsche. I think they've been spewing out some fluids. Shit, Adam, down in the pit lane, get an opportunity for some early chats with drivers who've not yet been out on the circuits. Not the way we would have liked to speak, spoken to them, but let's take the opportunity uh, to find out anyway. Tim Lewis Jr. is uh, with Shea. And Tim is a two-time winner of this race in TCR in the last two years. Tim, it, it's got to feel nice to come back to Road America, but then you get here and the track's completely different. I mean, was there any data that transitioned from the Alpha from the last two victories? Uh, we came here with the same uh, baseline setup and uh, it seemed to work pretty well for us. Just a few minor changes and, um, you know, staying online here is really important. I haven't really had enough laps around traffic to see how it's going to play out for us, but um, we're, we're really hopeful today. Do you think this is going to be a tire or a fuel limited race? More fuel than, than tire. Um, tire deck here has looked pretty good for us. And um, with this caution, it's extending our fuel window a little bit longer. So, you know, I, I think we're in good, a good spot. We were talking about the fact, uh, lamenting almost, that it's not a four-hour race here anymore. It changes the way that you guys strategize for it. But with this lengthy caution, we're going from a four-hour race to, well, from a two-hour race to an hour and 30-minute race even. How does that change things? Uh, it just helps our fuel number a little bit. Um, just helps uh, speed drive time under under yellow and keeps the, the pack tight together. So uh, gives us a chance for a little bit more racing at the end. This is a place where you can't just coast up to the checkered flag. Would this have been maybe a two-stop race? Uh, I don't know. I think it depends on um, when the when the pit stop opportunity is, and you know that's not up for me to decide. I just get in when I'm told to get in and, and do the best I can. And lucky for you, you've got some of the best on your box. Good luck today making it three in a row. Thank you very much. Uh, it's interesting to hear that, isn't it? Already, we had Richard Dean in the. IMSA Global broadcast sent early on from United Autosport and interesting to hear already and this was echoed by Deeney you have various scenarios that you play you can't have a scenario for everything but something happens you scrub out plan A put in a new set of parameters to your spreadsheet or move to something that you've already got planned so already they're very clever people and talented people on the pit lane, on the uh, strategy uh, boxes down there, will be working the numbers again. And they'll be talking to their drivers, Jeremy, and saying, right, I, I, I want you to save fuel now. I want you to use as little as you can behind the safety car. Get up into a higher gear, coast down, down the hill, and stretch and stretch and stretch to give that strategic opportunity. Very much so, and uh, you know, for the GS cars, uh, generally speaking, they can do about 55 minutes. Uh, last time out, of course, we saw one going longer than that, and yes. it's the end on, on just one pit stop, um, which uh, was bizarre. And as well, the, the car was won the race on the road, but not after a post-race uh, technical inspection. And there, was, there, were, there were two problems with the car. Number one, it was underweight. Uh, and number two, the, the, pit st the pit stop was too fast. Which, but was, the odd thing was, there was no no note about the fact that he was able to go go the whole distance on one That's pit stop. Nobody else was even close BMW? to that. The BMW, yeah. Uh, they have had a fuel tank reduction, though, haven't they, for this? Yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, they have by... Um, six litres, wasn't it? Uh, yes, six, six litres less fuel. That's exactly right. So that, that'll, th th that means there's, there's no way, generally speaking, they can get to the end of one pit stop. Um, th but this, of course, will, will help fuel consumption, uh, like uh, Tim Lewis is talking about. Um, it, it, it'll open up the wind. The GS cars, generally speaking, are going to have to make two stops, unless there's more than one long caution, in which case that they will possibly do it on one. Uh, but it'll, it'll certainly lengthens the window uh, of opportunity as to when they make that first stop. The cars continue to follow the 
exceptionally handsome Corvette that is leading them round is our safety car. And you might wonder why people off the back haven't dropped into the pit lane for some service. Well, the answer is quite simple, because the pits have not opened for service. And because it was so close to the start of the race, unless this goes on a very long time, the likelihood is it will not. Uh, it's called a short yellow, not necessarily because the yellow will take a short amount of time, but it is a short period of time since either the start of the race or the last time we had a full course yellow. So as it stands at the moment, the pit lane will not open until we go back to green. Still waiting for any decisions from that incident down at turn five. That has seen the retirement already of the McLaren Artura GT4. They've already said day is done. Aston Martin 09, the automatic car, waiting to hear from the team. They may be having a look at that car to see if they can get out and get some points. I think the back left suspension might be too badly damaged. And it'll be the front right of the number 83, the Porsche. As Shea Adam has wandered down uh, to the pit box of that uh, very beautifully turned out BGP Motorsports Porsche, the number 83. No crew members are yeah. here on this box, and it actually, uh, they share with the 31 Whalen Engineering Cadillac. Part of the rule with today's race is that none of the WeatherTech teams can start to break down their pit gantries until the race is done yeah. or until their teams are done. So there are several teams that in WeatherTech were not sharing with Pilot. They've already begun to dismantle their pit boxes, but now I think this might be an opportunity for Cadillac Racing. So maybe the first bit of good luck for them today. Yeah, that hasn't been a lucky part of the pit lane. If you are just joining us late, we'll not give you any spoilers for what happened earlier on. Catch the replay, the audio replay on uh, imsaradio.com. Already being published even as we speak. Thanks to Kerry Cobb and Tim Gray back in London for their hard work this week already. It's turned into a beautiful weekend. The weather forecast was uh, less than favourable when uh, I set off on Tuesday. And uh, I wasn't sure what to bring, so I brought everything clothing-wise. Uh, waterproof boots and extra jumpers, etc. Uh, the exception was a huge thunderstorm and rainstorm on Thursday evening, which swept across this area. Uh, did a bit of damage in the campgrounds and to one or two people having to sort themselves out on Friday morning, standing holding on to awnings on uh, Thursday night. So a few stories of that so that nothing got blown away and people getting very wet indeed. But since then, uh, sat a Friday morning dawn bright and a little bit of cloud yesterday morning, but yesterday evening was an absolute peach. And today, pretty much perfect uh, conditions as well for motor racing. One or two clouds just bubbling up uh, from the south, but not threatening at all at the moment. Still under caution with, uh, well, no green flag laps, actually. Incident at turn five on the opening lap. So here's how they stand with BMW leading from pole position. All of the first probably half dozen cars, um, certainly the first four cars, were ahead of the incident. Robert McGuinness for the BMW number 95 from Turner Motorsport, RS1 Eric Figueras and the Porsche number 28, Murillo Racing Ryan Yardley in the 56, first time with the team, done a great job this weekend. He's put himself in the shop window. Then Sean McAllister in fourth position. Patrick Gallagher was in amongst the start of that incident. That's how they come back to green, and we're racing with an hour and 41 minutes to go. Single file start, and Robert McGuinness gets a good one. Figueras is right in behind him, tracking him on the ideal racing line through turn one. Nice run further back for Kenny Marillo and Marillo Racing's number 72, Mercedes. 
He forces the Van der Stur racing Aston Martin with Rory Van der Stur behind to go defensively into the middle of the road, coming down towards turn three. Couldn't get that one done. Also, Hugh Plum right in behind there in the team at TGM Aston Martin Vantage. We have had 20 minutes of racing and we are waiting for the first racing lap and a, a penalty for car one. Changing lanes, false start. I did say it at the start of that as the TCRs came through that that looked a little bit marginal. Not my call to make, but thought it was worth flagging up and the start has been looked at and yeah. uh, race control agreeing with me also by the way it is Patrick Gallagher for automatic who will be penalized with a drive-through for incident responsibility on that first Lap incident. Accelerating performance team, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for Patrick Gallagher. Uh, sorry, accelerating. And, uh, yeah, for, for, for Michael Lewis, I mean, he doesn't often qualify the, the car. It's generally Taylor Hagler who qualifies the car, but he has done so several times in the past, and he, he should know the rules. So, uh, yeah, three time former series champion, uh, and he just sort of uh, called off guard there and changed lanes. He's going to get a penalty for it. That's going to be making it a longer afternoon for no number one, having started from the outside of the front row. So, coming down to turn five, the multicoloured Aston Martin gets into the back of the blue and white Aston Martin. That's the Van der Stur car, which just goes on to the back of the McLaren. I think Rory was going to be all right, I'm fairly certain. Yeah. Just got pushed into him, and then the Aston of Raman Abdul Vahari coming through. How did the 27? And Anton Diaz Pereira and Lord Star Racing's Mercedes get through. Racing cars are not known for having great steering lock and a turning circle. He must have wound everything onto the lock stop there to get to the left-hand side. Already we are seeing that uh, drive-through uh, having been assessed straight into the pit lane for the number one. Michael Lewis then comes through to give himself and the rest of the team the absolute best opportunity in the next hour and 38 minutes. Down to share Adam for an update on the Aston Martin that was involved in that accident, the <sighs> number 09. They're done. Automatic oh. Racing is pumping out their fuel container. That's a pretty good indicator. And Bill, uh, who's our friend from Twitter, John, he uh, gave the nod and said, yeah, this is never a good sign. But, you know, if we come back out, at least we, we're saving fuel. We, we can't refuel. Yes, sure enough. Thank you, Shea. So that's two of the three cars involved. The McLaren Artura, the number 69 car, uh, out and officially retired now for motorsports in action. And now the 09 Aston Martin as well. We wait on the fate uh, of the Porsche, number 83. But I have to say, I don't hold out much hope of that car coming back for BGB Motorsports. So Automatic Racing 09, BGB Motorsports uh, and Motorsports in action all involved. Two of those three uh, already officially retired. Patrick Gallagher in and through the pit lane in the number 44. That was the car that started that chain reaction. At the front of the field, it's much better news for BMW, number 95, with a half-second lead. Robert McGuinness, a good start from the original green flag. I'm sure he was blissfully unaware of what was going on behind him, and he's pulled out half a second again. It'll be more than that as they come to the line, and they go past us. Wait for them. There they go, across the stripe. Yeah, it's just been stretched to a second from Robert McGuinness over Eric Vilgaras in second place in the dark grey and bright green Porsche 718 GT4. Then Ryan Yardley in the 56. It's one of the bright orange Marillo racing cars. Then Sean McAllister in another Porsche for the 39 and another one of the uh, dark grey Porsches, in fact. So they've cleared off again, and that's a two very good starts from Robert McGuinness, who's having a good weekend, Jeremy. He certainly is. He's just got a new lap record to his name as oh, well. He really? Uh, it's only you know, very early on in the going, but 216.297 
last time around for the race leader, Robert McGuinness. It's effectively only the second flying That's exactly lap. right. Yes, indeed. Uh, that effectively, that, that, that beats the, the previous standard was set by Corey Lewis in the McLaren 570S uh, back in 2020. So uh, that record's been around uh, three years and it's now in the books. Because it's Robert McGuinness who uh, puts his name in there in place. He made a right TCR, really good start for Chris Miller. Moved himself ahead of the uh, Hyundais that were ahead of him on the grid and into the lead in that kind of 17th for JDC Miller Motorsports. That team has already had a really good result today in the Everton World Tech Sports Car Championship. Uh, and now Chris Miller, whose uh, family is part of that ownership group of JDC Miller Motorsports, is uh, running a nice job there ahead of the pole sitting number 33 of Harry Gottsack. Jeremy Shaw. Shea Adam and John Heindorf, hello. Well, we've already started to pick the pace up early on after that required intervention. Restart under review now, again, standard operating practice. But uh, just see how long that stays on my timing screen for race control. You can follow along, of course. Just look up Alcamel, Ibsa, A L K. A M E L Ibsen, and you will get to the timing pages. You've got the same information as we have here in the Ibsa Global Broadcast Centre, including the very helpful tracker by that live timing system. Through goes McGuinness again, and that's another best lap. 2.16.0 now. Robert McGuinness trying to break the toe and break the hearts of the Drivers behind him at the top of TCR. It's the Audi of Chris Miller, as Jeremy said, got back ahead. That was that was a quick car. In the early part of the weekend, it's been interesting to watch the ebb and flow of which cars in which sessions did very well. Um, it was being run pretty light in one of the free practice sessions. So light, in fact, that they ran it out of fuel. Now, this is going to be a penalty for the number 71. This is the Camaro's last outing here at Road America. A jump restart for Frank Depew. Just slightly too excitable. What a shame because he'd uh, done really well to avoid that incident down at turn five. And that is going to drop in a, a whole heck of a lot of real estate. This is the venue for one of their greatest victories with Robin Liddell passing car after car after car after a late race restart in the rain here a few years ago. In fact, that was in their rookie season because it made it into their movie called The Rookie Season. If you haven't seen that, by the way, seek it out. Really excellent piece of documentary filmmaking. Really taking you to the heart of the action and behind the scenes of what goes on in the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge. Just over an hour and 32 to go. And the gap all of a sudden has stretched to a second and a half at the front of the field. And that's a pretty that's a pretty good drive by Chris Miller. Yes, he got past everybody, Jeremy, well done. But he's driving away now from three Hyundais in close proximity to each other. But that gap's just starting to open out. Just a little bit, isn't it? And he's got some GS cars ahead of him as well, which are running at a very similar pace. Uh, the uh, start of the race, of course, TCR cars were split from the uh, GSs uh, because the quicker TCR cars are faster than the tail enders and GS, so they want to try and minimise the uh, potential for inter-class conflict in the first few corners while the quicker TCRs work their way past the slower GS cars. But now, of course, at the restart, the, it's all nose to tail and they've got that, uh, that problem. And uh, we're going to see a few cars like, dropping back through the pack of TCRs. But at the moment, uh, the uh, TCR leader there, Chris Miller, is tracking right behind Jensen Altsman, Jen, who who's, seems to be struggling a little bit in the early stages. Here comes number 71 car to serve the penalty for that jumped restart. Hello to Jerry Z, home safe and sound. He's got his car back as well, settling down uh, with getting the laundry in and getting ready to watch the racing. So coming back to the restart is where the penalty 
was assessed for Frank Depew. <laughs> oh, he, he, he went as soon as he heard green, 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 didn't he? Which is fine if, if the call had been green, green, green. Mm. You can, as, soon as, as soon as green's called, you can go. But um, so that was before the green flag was called, uh, do we I think? Presume so. Yeah. It looked like he pulled back over, tried to redress, um, but clearly race control oh. didn't think he'd done enough there. Uh, here's another penalty. Well, at least a warning about a potential penalty. Talk about this a, a lot here in IMSA Racing. You are not allowed to move in response to what's going on behind you. So pick a lane and stay with it. And Rory van der Stur, who's battling uh, with Hugh Plum now for fifth and sixth position, has been warned for blocking. That would generally mean... I think that was probably from earlier on. I, I think it was, yeah. yes. Good point. Because yeah. he, was, he was pushing over on the uh, Patrick Gallagher car, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, on that, so he's been warned for that, but no penalty so far. Guinness has really checked out. Now. He's he's that's ex that's outstanding, isn't it? Considering on the last lap, two minutes 15.8 now for Robert McGuinness, and uh, on that lap, he pulled out uh, another half a second or more over Eric Fulgaris in second position. Ryan Yardley. The young Kiwi doing a great job in third oh, position. He's done so a great yesterday. job all weekend, Jeremy. Well, he has. He's been. He's, he's uh, from uh, from New Zealand. He's been racing for the last uh, few year, couple of years in the former regional American series with the uh, Kiwi motorsport team. Uh, before that, he had also success initially in Formula Four in, in, in New Zealand. What I've forgotten about was he also won the, uh, the Toyota GR86 series that runs in. In New Zealand as well, uh, he'd won that, so he does have experience in this sort of car. Uh, uh, not, quick, not, not near as quick as GT4 car, but uh, this is his first opportunity to drive a GT4 car for Ryan Yardley. Boy, does he make a full advantage, full use of this experience and the opportunity has been given by Jeff Mosing, who unfortunately not here this weekend as a result of a crash here in the Porsche Carrera Cup last weekend, and uh, one of one of Jeff Moses' teammates at that top racing team in the Carrera Cup is Ryan Yardley. So it was that connection that led to Ryan giving this opportunity here and doing just an excellent job to run out front. Or toward the front. Yes, indeed. Yeah, the very small country with a relatively small population, New Zealand. They punch above their weight in pretty much every sport in the world. Quite extraordinary. He's doing a really good job in the USA just for It's Garrett Adams in car number 26. That's the, uh, the fast track racing BMW, black and red car. Uh, Garrett made his uh, debut in the championship uh, in the first race of the season at Daytona. Uh, only done one other race since then, so this is just his third race at this level. He's been racing in SRO the last couple of years. He's from Orlando, Florida, 21 years of age, uh, and he's doing an, an excellent job here to be running in the uh, seventh position, particularly he's just, he's just overtaken the car that leads the championship. It's the second of the Marillo racing entries with son Kenny, as opposed to Ken, who's the team principal, driving the car at the moment. We found out yesterday when Rob McGinnis put the Turner Motorsport BMW on pole that he was a little bit tired. He felt like he needed to sleep until almost race time. And Cameron Lawrence, his co-driver in the number 95 Turner Motorsport BMW, he thought breakfast tacos would be a good idea. Is that why he's going so quickly? Did you guys figure out breakfast tacos for him? Yeah, it must be. Yeah, I mean, we always have tacos on race day, it seems like. So uh, hopefully it works out for us today. Um, these Turner Motorsports guys have just done a great job all weekend. It's honestly been free to this point and I think that's going to be the key of this race we've seen a lot of mistakes and errors from other cars throughout the series um, the, through the weekend so I think that's kind of our biggest thing is just keeping our head down this guy's done awesome the BMW has been awesome um, really this whole year once we started to get our head wrapped around the new car um, we've really kind of come to terms with it and all of us have just been gelling as a team and with the car so yeah so far so good but uh, yeah there were more than a few tacos in the trailer if you walked in there 
Oh, man, and not just the stuffed variety addicts. I know I've seen the taco stuffed animals hanging all around. Um, but it is a, a cool thing to think about how many laps you guys have led as a duo over the last two races. It's been pretty dominant. Is it just getting a grip on this car? I think so. You know, Turner has a long history of BMW, but everyone was kind of starting fresh with the new car. Um, it was really neat for me to get to be involved with the first generation of the car and now being again with the first year of the new generation car. So it's uh, it's been a quite a bit different, actually, than we thought it would be. But, you know, we have Will assembles a really good team. Um, all the guys on the box, engineers, uh, strategists, everybody here just does a great job. So. For the drivers, it's pretty easy. We give you know the best feedback we can. They make the changes they need to, and we just go out and try to execute. So, yeah, I think it's everybody as a team. You know, there are kind of a lot of new pieces that came together this season and pretty late. So it took a little while to get our heads wrapped around everything and really just uh, get used to each other and kind of how to communicate and uh, translate everything. So once that kind of started to get better, yeah, it's uh, it's really awesome to see what Robert's been able to do this year as a driver. You know, we know he was great coming from GTD, but. But us kind of, you know, gelling together as a team. It's nice being the same size. Driver changes are easy. I don't think we've done one over 20 seconds, knock on wood. But, um, yeah, it's been a, a really fun year and really awesome to see these results. But it's really just been a whole team effort. You've got a lot of experience on this track with uh, tires that don't necessarily give a ton of grip and don't really give great feedback. Does that make the adaptation to the new track surface even easier for you? Yeah, I mean, luckily, you know, everybody almost gives you the scare tactic when you you know show up here for the first time with the repave so um you kind of built up to it slowly just to be more on the cautious side of things but i've loved this track since the second uh we got here the first lap the track feels great super smooth the curbings kind of give you some weird things to deal with it's different with kind of how they they joined it and merged old and new pavement and changed a few things there but but overall i mean road america has been one of my favorite tracks since the first time i've ever been here um just the town elkhart lake the food the track it's it's so fast it's just so much fun plus having it be on my birthday almost you know the last four or five years is an added bonus so tomorrow one year older so we got another guy on the team his birthday is today so hopefully you can do a little extra celebrate yeah go get some champagne thanks Cameron. thanks Jim. always great insight from Cameron Lawrence. It's been a lot of fun, actually. Uh, he's, he, he's a very considered young man, isn't he? And he talks very well. The mini Lawrence on the way, too, of course. Uh, yes, congratulations on that next generation, Lawrence, yes. Um, had the Turner team in our hotel for the last week or so. And just getting back uh, over the last few days, talking to the engineers, the mechanics, the, the team members, the genuine joy from that pole position yesterday, you would have think that they, you would have thought that all of them that I spoke to had been driving the car. Well impressed with Robert McGuinness and his driving to that pole position by three quarters of a second. He's stretching away now, and the lead is up to 3.2 seconds. However, Eric Fulgueras has just put the best sector three in of anybody in the race. He's picking up his pace and now he's done his best first sector as we are coming down to two and a half minutes away from minimum driver time. So foot down, foot down, let's start cracking on. We know that it takes a wee while to get the tyres up to temperature and pressure. Beautiful afternoon here. Track temperature with the sun having been out. It's gone up to a very toasty 95, 35 Celsius. Still only 22 in the air. It's been beautiful around that sort of temperature for the last couple of days. Really pleasant to be in, especially for our outstanding and committed camera operators and all of the marshals and volunteer corner workers. Plus those of you who are helping in the car parks and pointing the huge crowd to where they need to go. So, one more lap, I think. Where are we? Yeah, one more lap for the back of the grid, certainly. And that window will be open after 40, 40 minutes have elapsed. And that's when the strategy comes. How are you doing? What are the tyres like? If you're at, up front, are you going to stay out? Or are you going to take that first available opportunity, Jeremy, to come in and make your change? Yeah, and one, one of the factors here, depending on the, uh, the difference in speed between the two drivers in the car, 
Uh, but uh, certainly, you know, the, it, it's a pro-am series. Some of the, but many of the teams have two, at the very least, semi-pro drivers in there, so they're, they're equally matched. For them, the windows are, are much more broad than for drivers who have a, a big disparity in the lap times between the two drivers. Leader does not get the opportunity to pit, even if they'd wanted to. There was still half a minute on the clock. I'll keep an eye on, and the teams further back down the field. I'm thinking that there will be people at the back of the grid who will have the opportunity to come in. 20 seconds to go, some of the TCRs. It's probably a bit early for the TCRs, though. Oh, Frank, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. Frank Depew, actually, having had that drive-through, um, he's just coming down to Canada Corner now, so he's he's in the window. He's in the window from GS, as is Ted Giovannis. So they are both going to be in the window as they come round this time. Do you bring them in right now? Is that the plan? We'll find out in a couple of moments' time as the number 71 Camaro comes out of the final corner and heads up the hill. Robert McGuinness goes on his Murray way with a three and a half second lead. Let's, let's, to see, let's see who comes in. Here's the 44 car, well that's fine. We are half a minute past, so Patrick Gallagher into the pit lane in the car that had that penalty, which shuffled them back down the order and uh, lost them a bit of real estate, Shay. But that actually might have given them a uh, at least an opportunity to play a different strategy card. It has, and they have done fuel and left side tires so far for uh, what will now be Michael Cooper. I think they only changed left side tires on that car. Waiting on the driver change to finish as well as the fueling. That's the sound of another Aston Martin rumbling by me. That would be Ted Giovannis bringing in that number 64 at the backup car. There's a bit of damage to the nose of the 44 Aston Martin. That would be the accelerating performance car that sort of caused all the pinballing. Frank DePew did say out Driver change for TGM. TG of TGM is now out of the car, and OT, Owen Trinkler, is taking it over with four new Michelin tires. Very interesting. Thank you, Shea. Uh, Frank DePew enjoying himself too much to set his personal best in the race. And, ah, now, now, really interesting. I've, Shea's just brought up a good point here about drive time. Shea. Um, time in the pit lane doesn't count, does it? And both of those guys had drive-through penalties. Correct. So Gallagher had a drive-through penalty. I think he'll be short on his minimum drive time Great. because of that. And Frank DePew had a drive-through penalty. He did not come in. He stayed out for this extra lap. And I'm only seeing one other pit board swinging thus far, and that would be for the Toyota. So Ave Motorsport bringing in their driver. Oh, and Random Vandals is also in. So Paul Sparta is done. Kenton <laughs> Cook will take over there. Stand by us for a slew of cars, including oh boy. Uh, the turn of the sport machine as well, Shay. That would be the 96. That is the car that was started by Finn Barletta being taken over by Robbie Foley as they get ready to do, at the very least, two tires, the outside tires, four tires going on for Bryce Ward in the number 57 Windward Racing Mercedes. That is a driver change. Daniel Mora taking over. Another Mercedes into the pit lane is the number 27. That's Lone Star Racing. Scott Andrews climbing aboard a race car for the second time today. As Robbie Foley just did much the same thing. Left side's only for Foley, by the way. And uh, let's see, is Andrews getting four tires? Yes, he is for that Mercedes. We've got the 43 BMW also into the pit lane. That is Stephen Cameron racing. That was Sean Quinlan getting out Gregory, Gregory Leaf, who's taking over. And Todd Coleman is finally done driving a race car today after he started with a Lamborghini, now just finishing his opening stint in the Aston Martin for Todd Coleman Racing. Uh, that's uh, the 88 machine. Billy Johnson has taken over. And they head back out onto the track. Still well over an hour and a quarter to go, about a, an hour and 16 and a half minutes to go, in fact. For those of you checking through at IMSA Radio, if you want to... Slow stop for the number 14, I think, there for Arve Motorsports. Yeah. Across from our view there. Diego Azar getting into that car. He's been fast all weekend all weekend long. Uh, he was supposed to make his debut last year. I think he might have been here, actually. So maybe got some testing. I can't remember why he didn't start the race, though. Mm. 
Um, but uh, he's uh, been really fast. He's going to take it from Marco Gallant, but I think that was a longer stop, so uh, he's going to have more work to do than he would have had to do otherwise. You're going to crunch some numbers uh, and find out about that Aston Martin drive time issue. Number 44, Patrick Gallagher, remember, was assessed incident responsibility for that turn five first lap incident. And that means he transited the pit lane. That time in the pit lane does not count towards your drive time. He basically comes off as you trip the pit lane entry and time goes back on as you come out. Now, I said he was about 30 seconds. I think that's going to be very tight indeed. So we'll try and get official word on that. He may have to go back in that car at some stage. Doesn't have to be green time, but it does have to be track time. Starting to close up at the front of the TCR field again. We said that Chris Miller had pulled out a handy second, second and a half or thereabouts. That's just come down a wee bit as Harry Gottsacker in the number 33 Hyundai. It's the blue car with the red stripes. Coming down to turn five now, those two. Yellow, black and white for the leader in class. And they've got a Mustang closing in behind them. Mustang should be able to deal with them on the faster part of the circuits. Another... No, he's struggling. He's not able to. He's, he, he, is that he's, the 13 he's, guy, is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's of, been uh, running Hunting there all the way Oxford. through the race. He hasn't managed to, uh, in fact, he fell behind those top two in the cars and hasn't been able to find a way past. So those front wheel drive cars are pretty quick around here. Yeah, there are some fast changes of direction and some sweeping corners which suit the uh, aero-dependent TCRs very well. Just because they haven't got a huge rear wing, don't make the mistake of thinking that they don't have a lot of downforce and aero. The whole bodywork is tuned in those cars with the wheel arch extensions, the underbody extensions at the rear with that diffuser. And when you put them side by side, where GT4 car in theory has a lot more power, but it, the bodywork on a GT4 car much more street stock with a fairly discreet rear spoiler. Look, it's not exactly as you'd pull it out of the local showroom, of course not. But those TCRs, in terms of how much development is allowed on them, that is a formula on its own, and a global formula nonetheless. And there's a lot of work goes into them. They're all built by the factories, as are the GT4 cars, and therefore everything is optimised on those TCRs. And all of a sudden, a bit of traffic. Robert McGuinness is back out to three and a half seconds again. Filgueras trying to chase him down. We've just got into the Speedfield Bridge towards the long, long, long right-hander at the carousel. And the 88 Aston Martin has gone around for Billy Johnson. The bright green car, another experienced driver having problems at the kink. He was sitting in just outside the top ten, I think. Well, no, because he just made a pit uh, stop. He just so made his pit yeah. stop, yeah. He's just, he... just taking over the wheel of that car, so, wow. That wasn't his outlap that. by yes. any chance, was it? Yes. So maybe cold tyres then? No, he'd done one lap, I think. Mm. Caught out again, and I yeah, just wonder... Shot. That's yellow. It's a full course caution, of course, yes. Yeah, um, I just wonder, Jeremy, again, if the bump's there, and it's, it's more ride height uh, in conjunction with tyre pressures uh, rather than uh, tyre heat uh, that is causing these problems. So the Archangel Motorsport machine has been into the wall for Billy Johnson. Road America safety team there already sitting talking to yeah. them. And this is great news for the uh, oh. GS cars that have made a pit stop uh, and have stayed on the lead lap. Uh, I'm thinking particularly here Christian Shimjak, 
who is the championship leader, Robbie Foley, who's second place in the championship car number 96. Those two are running together on the road in 23rd and 24th positions, but they will leap forward when everybody else makes their pit stops. Uh, behind them is Daniel Morad, who's taken over from Bryce Ward. Uh, Elliot Skier will be next up uh, in the number 47 Nola Sport Porsche, and a couple of BMWs, Gregory Leofuge and Kenton Cook in the Rand of Vandals BMW, that's the green and white car. Great to see that team back again in the uh, Michelin Pilot Challenge Series. They do uh, many races here, but uh, they, they always have fun when they do, and it's looking like a good re good run here so far for that team. It's a good first stint by Paul Sparta. He's running uh, just outside the... Well, he's running 10th, I think, when he came into the pits. And that's a really good foot, good run for him, and he's handed that car over to Kenton Cook. So, do we reckon, Jeremy, that the first car in GS that's done its stop is Christian Simchak for Indeed. Marillo Racing? Indeed. Right, that, yep. yeah, so that is great, for, great news for them. Frank Depew managed to stay on the lead lap. Um, I think he might yeah, he be... Hasn't, he hasn't pitted yet. No, he hasn't pitted yet. I think he may be the last of the cars that haven't pitted. So... Everybody will dive in now with just over yes. an hour to go. So do you come in straight away with an hour to go? Or do you wait till the very last minute, an hour and nine to go? I think if, you, if you're towards the back of the cars that haven't stopped, so somewhere in the early teens, You can't be close on fuel here. So, is it worth just waiting to the last yawning moment and coming in before the restart to get full fuel load to take you to the end? How close to an hour are we going to get? GS can run an hour here, Jeremy, can't they? Not quite, no. So what are, what do you think we're looking for? 55 minutes or so. Right. Uh, I think it's about it's about right for, wow. for GS cars. Uh, it's you know, a lot of full throttle around here as well. So it, uh, and as you say, the uphill uh, all the way from Canada Corner to start finish line doesn't help if you're running low on fuel. As Mikey Taylor found out yesterday, you alluded to that earlier on. He thought he th the, the the car sort of it, it, it gave a cough. Told 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 Mikey it was running out of fuel. He thought he was going to have enough to get back to the pits. Not the case. So that was what caused a red flag during one of the practice sessions. Other than that, no harm, no foul. He, he learned uh, that uh, you know, there's not much time between the cough and the splutter and the stop. Haven't quite got the answer on the number 44 Aston and the drive time yet, but if there is a slight discrepancy on Patrick Gallagher's time, it wouldn't be the worst idea to pit that car put the put Patrick back in and possibly just run him round behind the safety car for a couple of laps and then take him back out again and top the fuel back off. Yeah, good Michael, yeah, Michael who's a regular driver along with uh, Moise Uretsky. We got, we got sick this week, which is unfortunate. It was a really late late call that Patrick Gallagher got to, to come and drive this car. He's got experience in Aston Martins and I think he was on, he was on the pole here a few years ago as well. Let's look at a replay. Yeah, Billy Johnson there just ran wide out of the kink, just carried too much speed there on, on cut tyres that weren't yet, I think, fully up to uh, temperature and pressure. The car slid wide on zero. He's on board with the number 88 car. A bit of a wobble also going into the corner, which didn't help. And uh, after that, he's uh, along for the ride. Uh, I talked about number 14 pit stop being a little bit slower than it should have been. Indeed it was, because unfortunately for Diego Izar, he's fallen off the lead lap at the moment. The good news is when the other cars make their pit stops, which they will do during this caution period once the pits are opened, mm. he will be able to get back onto the lead lap, but he'll still be at the whole back of the pack. So that's going to yeah. be interesting to watch the uh, Argentinian because, as I said earlier on, that car is fast, or he is very fast in that car around here. And, of course, the Toyota won the most recent round of this Indeed. championship at Lime Rock after the DQ for the Turner BMW. Billy Johnson, a carbon copy accident with what we've seen so many times uh, out 
them this weekend. Shea Adam has everybody in GS, pretty much. Cameron Lawrence, after talking to us, has decided to take up his driving duties behind the wheel of the number 95 Turner Motorsport BMW. They are doing the left side tires on that car. RS1 doing their pit stop as well. Eric Lagares has gotten out. Stephen McAleer has gotten in. They have done the left side so far as well. The number 39, that is the Carbon Porsche. We've seen Jeff Westfall install behind the wheel with that one. They are doing four tires for that car. 56 normally has uh, Jeff Mosing driving the opening stint, but Ryan Yardley did it today more than capably. We do miss you though, Jeff. Eric Voss has taken over. They are doing four tires for the Mercedes. Fuel and just a splash of fuel. Oh, no, they're going to change the right side, right rear and right front tires for the number 43. That was the car that Gregory Leopoosh just took over not very long ago. The first car back out on the lane was the number 20. 8 RS1 Porsche. So Stephen Mackler ahead of Cameron Lawrence, ahead of Robbie Foley, who came in for a splash. Then the next car off the lane, I believe, was the Carbon Porsche. Yeah, just ahead of a Ford Mustang. That must have been the uh, Luca Mars now driven Ford Mustang. So a very good stop by them as well. And it was a bit of a slower stop for Vandersture and their number 19 machine. Rory, I believe, started that one, didn't he, John? And he has left the pit lane a lot further down than the fifth that he came in. So that's the first bit of excitement in the pit lane. And if a few of the cars that had made a stop already uh, did come onto pit lane. Uh, notably, I think the uh, Stephen Cameron racing, uh, BMW, Gregory Learfish, Callum 43, Daniel Morad in the Windward racing, 57 uh, Mercedes, also number 96 car, Robbie Foley, the championship, uh, well, runner up at the moment, he's second in points. He has come onto the pit lane, and also Michael Cooper did come in in the accelerated performance Aston Martin and Kenton Cook. Just for a splash of fuel, this will give them a bit more. They won't be able to get to the end from here, but uh, it means that when they do, unless it's another lengthy full course caution, which they might well be able to, uh, but it'll certainly give them more options in the later stages of the race. TCR about to come in and Next time around. unofficially, but we are checking this out. Number 44 car is about half a minute short on the drive time for its first driver. I did think uh, it was going to be fine, but of course, as Shea reminded us, uh, time in the pit lane does not count, and that car was assessed the drive through. So that is Michael Cooper in that car. He is going to have to give that car back at some stage to Patrick Gallagher and allow him to yeah, he, complete. He was just in the pits. Did they didn't make that change? No. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't have to, I'll say again, doesn't have to be green flag time. Uh, it's just time on track. So they could have took him out, run him around for a couple of laps behind the safety car. Yeah, all right. They would have dropped some... Uh, they would have dropped some real estate but they're yeah, sitting but in I mean, yeah, 17th yeah, he, he, anyway he's so. quick enough uh, patrick so he, true, he, he, true. him to run the final stage of, uh, his, his, his confidence won't be an all-time high at the moment i suppose after mm. getting that penalty but um i i, I, I you know it'll be fine to put him in for the final stage you see i think he and michael cooper are going to be pretty closely matched in terms of, of pace as good as michael cooper is so lights are still flashing on the uh, Safety car. Now, the, the car directly behind the safety car is indeed at number 14, Arve Motorsports Toyota, Diego Azara at the wheel. So he will, before we go back to green, we'll have the TZRs in for their stops now, if they want, and they will. Uh, they'll all be in. Uh, and then after that, the number 14 car and any other, car, any other GS cars, in fact, number 64, uh, which is right behind, uh, they will be waved past the safety car and they'll be able to pull around to the back of the field prior to the restart so number 64 that's uh, Owen Trinkler and Diego Azar are now, are now back on the lead lap with these pits with the pit stops last time around for the race leaders Rob Wiggins being helped into his car he will be the finishing driver extraordinary scenes every time we see this and the fact that it seldom, if ever, costs them any additional time to the fuel stop and the tyre change. 
on go the wheels, just waiting for the number two, uh, the number 33 second place cars that came in to restart. The Unitronics machine is ready to go. They roll it almost identically the same times, and I think that's advantage to the number 33 there, Shea Adam. You're in a better position to see. Here comes the 33. The 17 gets moving and gets away behind the 33, but beating them both out is the sister car, the championship leader, number 98. That is Mark Wilkins now behind the wheel. Should mention also it's Mikey Taylor driving the Unitronics Audi, the number 17 for JDC Miller Shea Motorsports. Beating. And, well, you were looking at one of the uh, Rockwell Autosport Development Group cars, John. It's very close in the livery with the dark blue and the yellow accents on it um, and we did also have a pit stop for the number one that's Michael Lewis who has handed over to Taylor Hagler no. fuel and front tires for all those cars what I was gonna say was beating them all out sort of stealth like because we were watching the cars we were expecting to be at the front the car that came in from fourth position Tyler Maxson Ooh. now behind the wheel of the 91 the blue Vanister Racing Machine, and Tyler Maxson, I reckon, is the first of the TCRs out on the circuit. Uh, behind Tyler is the 98 of Mark. Uh, Mark Wilkins brought it in, didn't he? No, he's taken it out, excuse me. There was a driver change. Robert Wiggins out in the 33, and in the number 17, Mikey Taylor has taken that car over. So excellent work from Van der Stur Racing. We'll get the wave by done. Make sure everybody is in the right place on the track and the TCRs, all of the TCRs are behind all of the GS cars. So, frantic work down in the pit lane with just under an hour to go. This, Jeremy Shaw, could be very interesting. We saw, we did see cars running out of fuel towards the end of the WeatherTech race when they didn't think they were that marginal. Uh, we've got long runs here for both GS and TCR. This could be a bit of a fuel-saving race. Yeah. And there are one or two drivers that we know out there who are very good at fuel-saving while still going Quick, I quickly I placed before the coach Robbie Foley, uh, and also uh, certainly Robert Liddell. We've seen him. Remember what he did at Sebring, where he was some kind, some, uh, doing some kind of alchemy and using the sweat from his brow to power the car. I have no clue how he did that. Car smoking as it went across the line, but he kept it together. So. That's interesting, and that car is very, very quick indeed in the middle sector, that car being the Camaro, the long se sector. So this could be absolutely bonkers. Of course, it's in submission and pilot challenge. It could be more bonkers than usual with not just pace, but also strategy to be played out. We're looking for our Michelin moment of the race in both GS and in TCR, what? I suspect it'll come in the next hour. Yeah, yeah. you're not going to get one from me for a while yet because <laughs> uh, there's the, 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 some strategies that, that might work out, but we're not going to know until uh, the uh, two hours have elapsed, two hours and a bit have elapsed because it's not going to be two hours exactly. It's the bit that's the worry potentially for some of these teams. Indeed so, Mr Shaw. So, as they go across the line and... The final people peel into the pit lane who are requiring service. Oh, Robert Liddell is coming in for an extra splash of fuel. I think that's really, really smart. So Christian Shimchak, who had stopped earlier, is indeed the leader in that Mercedes number 72 for Marilla Racing. He did not stop in that yellow flag, uh, in that yellow flag situation. So he's banking on everybody else and himself having to make a stop and a splash. And he's hoping that they can build up enough of a lead that his splash, which will be the same length as everybody else's because you only need the same amount to go. Actually, probably not. He might need a little bit more because he's had more uh, running. Then it's going to be Nola Sportelli at Skier in second place in the Porsche. 
That's the number 47 car. Daniel Morad for Winwood Racing, the 57 car, is in third place. Yes, but he did uh, did take a splash during the course, not just now, but uh, but uh, when when the other leaders came in, so did it was it? his second stop. OK. Uh, he, the same also for Robbie Foley. In between Morad and Foley, Stephen McAleer did not uh, come in for that extra stop. Right, interesting. So, of the guys that did come in and take a splash, the best placed are Daniel Morad in third position in car number 57 and Robbie Foley in car number 96 in fifth. So, Stephen McAuley's car, the RS1 machine, in fourth place. Had him in the booth uh, earlier in the weekend. Very much concentrating on this championship. They've only been down the pit road once. Robbie Foley has as Jeremy said, for Turner Motorsport, the 96, they've had a wee splash. They've been down twice, Cameron Lawrence once in the 95 car. So they're all banking on good. A lot of these cars are banking on going a long way to the end. Then it's Jeff Westphal in the car band with Peregrine Porsche, number 39. Luke Lamars for Core Motorsports is the first of the uh, Mustangs, the number 59 car. Then Eric Voss for Marillo Racing, and the AMG number 56, the bright orange car can uh, kenton cook for random vandals racing in a bmw m4 there's no trash can't just trash can is what they've got on the side of that car which is brilliant i do i do, I do like the the uh, attitudes we have in this paddock uh, behind that's got andres lundstar racing and gregory leofug for Stephen Cameron racing the 43 car, the, the orange and blue car. Michael Cooper accelerating performance. Uh, Aston Martin Vantage, that car does need another stop. We believe they're about half a minute short on the drive time for their opening driver, Patrick Gallagher. Like just far out, aren't they, on the uh, safety car? So all of those cars that took the splash are going to have to hustle back around to get in front of the TCR cars. We had the Robin Liddell Rebel Rock Racing Machine. He came through. He's only got Tyler Max in to go by. I think I saw the 64 car coming into the pit lane as well for TGM. Green flag is in the air. 54 minutes on the nose as they crest the rise. And this is the race for the Mission and Pilot Challenge. Our final event of the weekend, really good restart from the front of the field by Christian Schumchak, but a better one for the Nola Sport number 47 Porsche round the outside and chops across the nose, really wiped the nose of the restart leader. And that, I think, Schimchak had to lift off there, and Daniel Morad says, thanks very much, I'll be having a basin full of that. Goes through to second in the Windward Racing Black and blue machine that puts the car that restarted the lead down to third position and there's another Porsche right there that's Stephen McAleer championship contenders right at the sharp end of the field oh there's a bit of weaving around as well going down to turn five what a maneuver around the outside by Elliot Skier took his opportunity and squeezed straight down in fact actually the Restart leader Christian Shimchak went a little bit wide because he was so tight on the inside. Pit lane speed violation. Uh, this is for the Hyundai Elantra. Cabot Bigham has been called for that last time through. That will be a drive through. Plus one, but it's absolute. 52 and a half minutes to go. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, if it's if it's green all the way from here, uh, these these lead GS cars I think are going to be are going to be struggling, but uh, struggling more than the people who didn't uh, come in and do a special fuel, and particularly uh, that would be Christian Shimjak in car number 72, who's a championship leader. Uh, also Elliot Skier uh, as well, he didn't. Uh, and uh, for 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 Shimjak, you know, as a championship leader, you don't want to be gambling too much. Elliot Skier, and Christian. Diego Azar making a couple of moves already. Elliot Skier and Christian Simchak, of course, contemporaries and rivals in MX5 Cup, in yes. the MX5 Cup not so very long ago, so they're pretty used to each other's driving style. And they're certainly, yeah. you know, that was close racing, but I think it was okay. I don't see that there was any problem there. Through the top four, but. Uh, good point, yes. Yeah. 
won championships, haven't they? Indeed so, Jeremy. Quick question from Ben, who's at Ford's Sunfire. Says, can you explain the difference between the GS and GSX cars in IMSA? Uh, there is none. Absolutely the same. GSX is just the sprint format class in the VP Fuels VP Racing Challenge. Uh, and in fact, the Camaro that Frank Depew uses um, is interchangeable with this car that is here. In fact, they have, I think, three Camaros in that team, and all of them are uh, usable in either of the series, and indeed, at various times, have been swapped through. Just a couple of, of notes. We've got a drive-through. Oh, that is, that's the pit lane speed violation for the called uh, a little while ago. Just a bit of housekeeping, a couple of retirements. 88 Archangel Motorsport has gone. Uh, that was the car that was in the wall for Billy Johnson. And uh, we've also lost the number seven as well. Uh, that is now an official retirement. Did see the camera on Billy Johnson's car. So that was still working, but the rest of the car was a little bit bent out of shape. So, 50 minutes to go. Incident, accident, lots of talking points, and a bit of side-by-side -side oh. accident. And that is where the leading turn six we're talking about here, where the leading BMW from Turner Motorsport, again, with a little bit of uh, hip and shoulder from uh, was that Jeff Westfall? It would have been, yeah. So he'd gone past Robbie Foley and then went about Cameron Lawrence as well. And gets through, so there'll be a couple of places gained there by Robbie, by uh, Jeff Westfall, excuse me, in the number 39 car bar with Perrigan. Up the main straight, all trying to get the slipstream, the draft, but side by side. I don't think that was a great move to go out of line there. One of the... AMGs, I think it was Scott Andrews, yes it was in the... He was uh, left out, hung out to dry there. Lost a couple of places. Traffic jam heading into turn one was fantastic. That was just outstanding, isn't it? <laughs> Fastest TCR lap of the race, sixth position in that class for the number five KMW Motorsports, uh, Alfa Romeo, Giulietta Veloce. 33. Third position for Robert Wiggins, Hyundai Elantra, Brian Hurt at Autosports. Ahead of him by about uh, a second and a half, his teammate Mark Wilkins in the 98 and Van der Stur Racing, courtesy of an outstanding turnaround in the pit lane. The number 91, Hyundai Elantra NTCR, Tyler Max in the blue and white car leading that category. And there's smoke coming from Rob Wiggins' car from the centre exhaust at the back of that car. Now, did he just run over a kerb? No, it is definitely just starting to smoke. Now, we've seen this before. It doesn't necessarily mean an imminent retirement. There's 48 minutes to go. Is it just a bit of oil overfill? Right behind him, the number 17 now of Mikey Taylor and Denny Dupont is there as well with the 15, the two yellow and black Audis, yeah. Rockwell and Unitronic, two different teams, similar uh, colour schemes, particularly with the bright yellow flashes on it. Yeah, there's two uh, Brandt Herder Autosport Tandes in second and third, running in championship order at the moment, first and second in the championship, running second and third right now, number 98 car ahead of that number 33 car, Robert Wickens. Crunching some. Oh, a spin for the Lone Star machine. This is the blue and white car, and he's left gone rear. off. Left rear is flat. No. No. He's gone off just at the exit of the carousel again. He's going to just. Uh, oh. Actually, a bit further round, yeah. And. As you say, Jeremy, did he get a helping hand here? In fact, actually, it's turn 13. My apologies. I think he might have got a little bit of a help there. 
Uh, turn 13, Billy Mitchell corner. Bridge no longer there because there's a tunnel underneath it. And mm, hard to say. I don't think you could... I do not think you could convict anybody uh, on that evidence that we've just seen. He's got straight into the pit lane. Shea, you've had a couple of other callers as well with 46 minutes to go. I've got one, and it's a little bit strange. Greg Leofuge has just come in. They've given him a splash of fuel and a new right front tire. Dropped him off the air jacks and sent him back out. But yeah, I'm down with Lone Star waiting for Scott Andrews to come in. They did not know, well, they didn't expect to see this car again. When they saw it spun on track, they did not know that there was a tire issue until they heard you guys say it and then saw the video evidence. But yes, left rear tire is the only thing that needs to be repaired on this car. Let's see if they are going to add any fuel. No, they're confident with their fuel. Uh, they are only doing that left rear tire. Very interesting. Uh, also, just wanted to add, I checked in with the 44. That's the accelerating performance, asked Martin, and said to Patrick Gallagher, are you going to get back in? And he said, no. Why? He said, well, we reckon you're about 30 seconds short on drive time. And he goes, but we, we met it. And I said, nope, your penalty down pit lane. That doesn't count against the drive time. And then there were some expletives. But uh, yeah, there, there might be a change <laughs> in strategy with that team. Uh, that, uh, could, that could well be uh, the title of your autobiography here. Dot, dot, dot. And then there was some expletives. My life in the pit lane. Shit, Adam. Very good. Uh, out of the pit lane for the Lone Star Racing 27. That car... Uh, regains the track, has not yet lost a lap, but is only the front straight away from doing just that. However, will now presumably go to the end. I'd be surprised if they didn't put any fuel in that. They might as well have just put whatever it took to get them. I just, I mean, I'm okay. I'm, I'd be hopeless on the pit box, wouldn't that? Uh, new fastest lap of the race race last time around. We'll come back to that at the moment at turn one as there was side-by-side -side action. Christian Shimchak and Daniel Morat. That was tight again. And once again, it's Shimchak who uh, loses out just a little bit. And Robbie Foley yeah. gets through and takes a position. Yeah, these BMWs are going to be hard to beat right now. Uh, once again, Turner Motorsport has called the strategy absolutely spot on, I think. And uh, Elliot Skier is doing a super job out front. And with those Mercedes battling together, he's pulled away a little bit. But Robbie Foley is challenging on the outside of Daniel Morin. Ooh, he's actually giving him a helping hand through turn five. <laughs> well, uh, a helping so right, right with it, helping bumper through turn five, yeah. Right behind him, though, is Kenton Cook and that random Vandals uh, green and white car uh, splitting the two Turner Motorsport BMWs. And Christian Shimjack has got himself shuffled back now from second, or well, he's leading at the restart, down to... Was that seventh position, is it? Yeah. Uh, fastest lap of the race for the number 92 last time around. 2.15.4.2.3, which I was going to get to. The Random Vandals yeah. car. Kent is very good. We like that. Um, we saw a couple of cars splash just before the green flag. One of them was the number 71 Camaro. Robin Liddell uh, up six or seven places since the restart in four laps. I think he was 17th on the restart. Yeah, he was. So up to 10th position, only six seconds away from the leader, three quarters of a second from Luke Namars. And with that extra splash of fuel, may not be clear, as everybody may not be clear, but he's got a little bit more than some of the cars ahead of him. Let's put it that way. I think Michael Cooper did the same in the 44, Aston Martin. Behind him. No, actually, he didn't because they've been down for a, a penalty as well, haven't they? So Robin uh, has been down twice down the pit lane. Uh, three times, actually. Not Robin himself. The car has been three times down the pit lane. Uh, that was that extra little splash after Robin had taken it over. Uh, the BMWs are so fast on the straights here. Just breezes past the Mercedes going to turn one. That's Robbie Foley. Brilliant. Uh, Kenton Cook right behind him and right behind Kenton uh, Cook is Cameron Lawrence. And, uh, yeah, the uh, Mercedes is a little bit breathless here. He's doing his best through the corners, is Daniel Morad. And he retakes second place at turn three, but for how long? Watch him uh, before he gets to turn five. Is he going to still be ahead? Battle for second, this is, that Jeremy is describing. He goes immediately to the right-hand side. Now, that's uh, the left-hand side of the track, rather. That is not blocking. Daniel's really good on the break, and he's forcing the BMW to go too deep. 
and that was smashing driving from Daniel coming through the number 92 yeah. Ken Coop random vandals car so three BMWs in behind that AMG GT4 and Kenton splitting the two blue and yellow cars the two uh, turn of BMW cars with the green and white car then we've got another AMG that's the Christian Simshack driven Mercedes AMG GT4 he's back on the back of them Stephen McAleer not too far away for RS1 and the Porsche oh heavens this is starting to heat up rather nicely and at the front of the field Elliot Skier on a Sunday evening drive probably just you know listening to his favourite tunes maybe thinking about what he's going to have for dinner of course not he's pushing he's pushing really hard we have lost the number 46 Aston Martin for TGM that's gone straight on at turn five they've had problems there earlier on in the weekend with the other car when Trinkler's still running but this time the 46 of Matt Plum straight on at uh, the exact same part of the circuit where the 64 had its problems earlier in the weekend how bizarre we saw TDS in the Michelin in the uh, WeatherTech Sports Car Championship have two cars have almost identical incidents it caused a lot of damage earlier in the week and now the two TGM cars have suffered the same fate Kenton Cook goes down the inside immediately to defend down into turn number three as the second place has gone the way of Turner Motorsport and this time Daniel Morad could not hold Robbie Foley back no. and he will settle for third at the moment as Kenton Cook immediately flicks to the driver's left hand side under the Sargento cheese bridge as he tries to get a little bit of a draft and in fact he slowed himself down there Kenton Cook loses a position to Cameron Lawrence plenty going on in the battle for second down to sixth position in TCR the Van der Stur racing blue and white number 91 Hyundai underneath that same Sargento cheese bridge just coming under turn two heading down towards a uh, turn three uh, four excuse me down to turn five numbers let's try and get them in order high enough down towards turn five he has been caught is what i was trying to get to he inked out a tiny little bit of a lead but not much on the restart he's driving that car very nicely in a great turnaround by van der Stur pit crew tyler maxon and Tyler Maxson in behind the Van der racing uh, car wheel at the moment with Mark Wilkins and Mikey Taylor and Tim Lewis and Robert Wiggins and Denny Dupont and Ryan Eversley and Chad Gilsinger all out there at the moment. Pretty much all in an equidistant line. Back end of that number 91 Van der Stur racing car does not seem as planted as the Brian Herter cars. It is drifting noticeably more through the high speed, high commitment corner. So coming out of the out of turn one, uh, down through a turn seven, uh, exiting the carousel and through the kink just seems that the back end is a wee bit more lively now the drivers might like it like that to help rotate the front end but this immediately the, the, the turn in jeremy on that number 91 car there's turning oversteer and it's turning catch it and then fire through the corner it's uh, hellishly good driving I'm, I'm not sure that you can keep that up for a whole race but they're doing it at the moment number 95 bmw loses a position to Daniel Morad he'd lost that position to it earlier on in the lap going through turn one or into turn one gets it back at turn three that is a repeating theme that Daniel Morad has had to do with the BMWs he has and uh, having made that little mistake a couple of laps ago Kenta Cook certainly get himself back into the picture here but uh, the he, behind him Cameron Lawrence and Christian Shimjak but catching up with that pack of cars for the lead are Stephen McAleer in car number 28 Jeff Westfall uh, the, the Mustang and Luca Mars are doing a nice job and Robin Liddell they're all in a train basically the top 10 cars are pretty much nose to tail and there's a small gap to Eric Foss with the uh, 
Toyota right behind Derek Foss and then Michael Cooper uh, and Toby Krahovic have taken over from Garrett Adams who did a really good first in the car number 26 running in 14th place don't count anybody out in this says new best lap of the race there by our race leader uh, Elliot Skier at a, a 2 bit 16.1 yeah just I'm going to remind everybody here Robert Liddell and Eric Foss made that extra stop so have slightly fewer potential problems on fuel than the cars ahead of them. Luca Mars, nine, that number 59, Ford Mustangs times. Luca last time around, uh, 2.16.9, 2.16.7 for Robert Liddell. He's half a second back, 2.16.7 for uh, Eric Foss. Luca Mars did not make the extra stop has only done the one stop. Interesting. Let's see how that plays out. Ken Cook still has the fastest lap of the race and he's gone by uh, Daniel Morad on the start finish line and Morad this time will have to defend again to the 95 BMW. There's the pass into turn one. I'll square the corner off, says Daniel. Oh, he's just spun up the rear Michelins and that's going to hurt him down towards turn three. He won't get it back this time and he's falling into the clutches of the orange Marillo racing Christian Simchak driven 72 car. That Mercedes, that Mercedes, the 57 car, does not have the straight line speed and a change in the lead for TCR as through to the lead, Mikey Taylor in the turn yeah. one and in third position, all yeah. of a sudden, the Alfa Romeo oh, Giulietta. That has been picking its way through, restarted and I think in seventh position and is just basically making its way through and has just recently in the last couple of laps passed the two Brian Herter Autosport Elantras and now looms large in a podium position. Yeah. Stalking, Mike, uh, st stalking Tyler Maxson. Looking for his third win in a row. So uh, that uh, Audi that now leads went from third to first uh, on uh, on this lap. Yeah, here we go. Let's see, let's see what happened at turn one. It's I mean, a classic. He was second. He yeah. just he just drove past him. Yeah. yeah, classic drafting manoeuvre down towards turn one. 17 Unitronics car goes through. Mikey Taylor confident enough to be able to go around the outside. There was a defence put up by the Van der Stur Racing car driver but actually the pass was made as they go down the hill and uh, he's just starting to clear off in that black yellow and white now time to make a move then I would say for Tim Lewis in the Alfa Romeo Giulietta Veloce half an hour ago he doesn't you know he's as long as he's right there he's look after his tyres he told Shea Adam earlier on that he thinks it's uh, tyre where it shouldn't be an issue here, unlike at Lime Rock Park. The last time out for the uh, TCR cars where it was a major problem for everybody. Yes, it is. There's a lapped Hyundai in amongst the GS hordes as they head towards turn one. I think uh, Jacob Daly needs to uh, keep his wits about him there. 216.6 for our race leader. The best new best lap of the race there by Cameron Lawrence in car number 95, up into fourth position on that, made up one position. Uh, and uh, two minutes 15.34. That's the new fastest lap of the race. Yeah, with a bit of, uh, for a moment, a bit of clear track. Now coming down into turn five. Battle for the lead has now been turned up to gas mark seven. Elliot Skier leads Robbie Forley. Elliot feeling the need to defend it, who turned six at the top of the hill. Here comes Ken Cook. Shea Adam has found out what has ailed the Team TGM car. Uh, not the same sort of failure that they had at turn seven, uh, excuse, excuse me, at turn five early on in the weekend, Shea. Nope, uh, something completely different, alternator decided it didn't want to keep playing ball so that's kind of an important bit and the 46 is officially retired this is starting to heat up now the top four cars having a gap of about a second between themselves and Daniel Morad in that Winward Racing number 57 AMG GT4 just 
fastest lap after fastest lap here. A couple of laps ago, 12 different cars passed, posted their fastest lap of the race for their car. Yeah, and the top 12 cars all within 10 seconds with uh, 31 minutes remaining. Robin Liddell and Luca Mars. Luca Mars for Core Motorsports is up to eighth position. Robin Liddell's now caught Jeff Westfall. Luca went past him a lap or two ago. Yeah. Now Luca but... did follow Core, uh, the Core Mustang did follow Robin down the pit lane, but I've only got him in the pit lane once. Surely that wasn't their first pit stop for Core, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, as, 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 as with quite a few other cars out there as well. But look at this battle for the leader heading into turn one now. It's Elliot Skier who's looking in his mirrors and sees nothing but BMW. <laughs> BMW, BMW, BMW has to defend staunchly there on the inside into turn three. It's only a matter of time, Elliot, I think, but he's going to stay out as long as he can. Then there's the two Turner Motorsport cars with Robbie Foley and Cameron Lawrence sandwiching Kenton Cook in the middle, and all of a sudden those four cars have pulled away a couple of seconds from the rest of the pack. Substitute the manufacturers here for Edmonton Master MX5 cars, and we've got something akin to what we watched twice earlier on. Michelin moment of the race to be decided in the next half hour. One for GS, one for TCR. You talked about uh, Robin Liddell, who's uh, on the tail of uh, Jeff Westfall, who's just been overtaken, as, as you said, by Luca Mars. But closing in on uh, Robin Liddell is Eric Foss and Diego Azar in that uh, in that Toyota. They're in the uh, 11th and 12th positions, and they've narrowed that gap from uh, over three seconds to just over one within the last four laps. Top four together. Exit of the carousel. Main time in TCR. The Alpha now right up behind the leader. So it is the number 17 Unitronics Liquid Molly Audi. Yellow, black, and white. And then the black and gold Alpha through turn eight down under the Speedville Bridge. Johnsonville, home of the Brats. County Road J, about five miles away. That's where their world headquarters is. Three and turn uh, out of this. Yep. The gate three and turn left. Turn left and keep going. And there's the big BRAT sign outside, which someday I'm going to have someone take a picture of me outside. <laughs> Caption this: No need, or he has been. <laughs> Under half an hour to go. Just a little gap. Breaking the top seven or eight TCR cars. It's the top pair that's got away in the sunshine. What a fabulous afternoon. Great way to spend a weekend. Thank you for staying with us just after a half an hour left of Sunday evening if you're in Central Europe. Just coming up to half past ten in the evening in the UK. Plenty of people tweeting in at IMSA Radio. Thank you. Just loving this racing with Michelin Pilot Challenge still giving us, as always, the excitement and the entertainment that we expect. Battle for third, fourth, and fifth in TCR, heading down the uh, hill towards third. Sixth three. and seventh as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the battle for everything bar yeah. the first two in yeah. TCR. <laughs> uh, going underneath the Sargento sponsored bridge has been pulled up. Sargento cheese bridge, not actually made of cheese. Uh, if somebody said I, I had to say it. Down towards turn number five, the battle for the lead is on as well, and there was a defensive move down the inside. Drivers left for the number 17 that leads in that category, Unitronic JDC Motorsports Audi. And that is because Tim Lewis is putting the pressure on in that very distinctive Alfa Romeo Giulietta Veloce. It doesn't look like anything else there. Oh, off one of the Rockwell Auto Development cars. Denny Dupont from sixth position. I think Ryan Lewis has sneaked through there in the 37 LA Honda World, Honda Civic uh, FL5, the only of the FL5s that are here. Remember the, the other car. 
a damaged air damper and they'd had some incidents earlier on in the season and used up all their spares those cars so new there is not an unlimited supply of uh, spares at the moment so that car couldn't be fixed Leaders across the line, yeah. and is there a bit of breathing space there for Elliot Skier this oh, time? That was his best lap of the race, 2 minutes 16.16, fractionally quicker than his earlier lap by two hundredths of a second. He's doing a fabulous job, is Elliot Skier here, uh, to hold off these BMWs. Kenton Cook side by side with the number 95 of Cameron Lawrence through turn one. Lawrence way off the circuit. He has to be careful with track limits there. And again, Kenton defends to the inside. And I don't think that helps him in the middle part of the track. And oh, Lawrence trying to pinch down on the inside. Kenton Cook has the inside line, but Lawrence has gone through. So it is Nola Sport, BMW, and uh, Nola Sport, uh, and Porsche, then the two Turner BMWs, then the random Vandals BMW. Looks great in that green and white color scheme does and uh, they, they pulled out now three seconds over the uh, the two Mercedes basically Daniel Morin and Christian Schimzak locked together Luca Mars is right behind them though in that Ford he just got past Stephen McAleer last time around uh, he's, he, he cleared Je Jeff Westfall a few laps before that and Westfall is next up just ahead of the Chevy of Robin Liddell then Eric Foss and Diego Azar as well and still the top 12 covered by less than 10 seconds so the leaders fast as they are are not pulling away from those cars at the bottom end of the top uh, dozen BMWs remember with a 6 litre smaller tank than we saw them last time yeah it was Denis Dupont and trying yeah. to well the two the two Brian Hurley cars was that was that was, oh, a, was a lap car. it was a lapped car yeah I was just about to say who were they trying to lap there and that he got offline uh, it was the Jacob Tyler yeah machine I think I think it's spot on number 70 uh, sitting in 13th position. Down the front straight again. Yeah. This time the Nola Sport Porsche has to go to the right-hand side of the track. Now back to the middle. Going to get a little tap here, I think, from the first of BMWs. Robbie Foley right there. Yeah. They're still running down the middle of the track to turn number three. This might be an opportunity for Cameron Lawrence to go through on his teammate. Side-by-side -side Porsche and BMW under the bridge through the kink down towards turn number four and the BMW is fast in a straight line it's already past the Porsche pulls in front down the inside there's a slight gap only of both BMWs have passed the Porsche great driving by all concerned and here comes Kenton Cook trying to make hay while the sun shines he does not want those two turn of BMWs to disappear in the distance so if he's going to get past Elliot Skier he's got to do it now still 23 minutes to go here we believe all of these cars are quote-unquote marginal on fuel Shea Adam already with her game face on going to stare at people until they feel they have to tell her what their fuel numbers are at the moment a retirement officially now as well for the uh, number 83 car which had those issues earlier on just again it's just a piece of accounting uh, really that machine for Porsche and for Tom Collingwood involved in the first lap, lap uh, first lap Turn five incident. Those two turn cars are they are absolutely quick. locked together. Yeah, they really are fast. And uh, the BMWs certainly got the edge on the straights here. No question about that. And, yeah, the Porsche is generally pretty fleet on the straights, isn't it? But not today compared to these BMWs. And the, those two have locked it together now and getting a bit of a sort of a draft from each other. And they've edged away just a little bit from Elliot Skier. 
Foley is uh, in second place in the points. So 170 points behind Kenny Murillo and Christian Schindrick coming into this weekend. But that number 96 car he shares with Vin Barletta. It's the only car to have won more than one race this season in the GS category. They're pulling away from the Porsche of Elliott Skier, who has the green and white BMW for company. Down to turn five again. BMW's lost six litres in their fuel allowance. They had very impressive fuel mileage at Canadian Time Motorsport Park. And, and doesn't seem to have trimmed their speed. Of course, they. Their last stop, Jeremy, was some uh, tw lap 20, so quite a long time ago. Yeah, so that... down through turn three, a lap or so ago. Yeah. He got a bit defensive, didn't he, Elliot yeah. Skier? That cost him on the straights. Was he? I, I, it's hard to know, isn't it? Because no, he, he, got, he was defensive coming down the hill into three, yeah. and a tight line into the corner, so it couldn't carry the same it. speed yeah. through the corner, pinched the corner, yeah. And that gave the BMW an opportunity to get that uh, run on the straights, it, and after that, bye-bye. What do you do, though? Do you let them go through down the inside to turn three? The problem is that they're right. hunting as a pair at the moment and that they had both sides of the circuit covered for it. Yeah. Uh, it's all very well if you're defending fresh air. We've all seen people do that and cost themselves a place or two. This is precision driving from Turner BMW at the moment. There'll be a fuel advantage for the number 95 car in the hands of and Cameron Lawrence and now it in the third position from Canada corner down the inside Ken Cook now has to try and reel in those two yellow and blue cars in the random vandals BMW down in the 15s that lap for the race leader Cameron Lawrence 15.929 fastest lap of the race a 15 uh, Three. Yeah. By that, by Cameron Lawrence. That was back on lap uh, 31. Still a cracking battle and going on in TCR, by the way, Jeremy. The yeah, front two absolutely together, Ooh. and they're four seconds ahead of Tyler Maxson, who holds on to third for the blue and white Hyundai of Van der Stur Racing. He's only got a tenth of a second, uh, all from uh, Mark Wilkins. And cars in the pits. Yes, now one of them is, I think we sort of expected Shea Adam. This is the number 44 Aston Martin, a bit short on their time for Patrick Gallagher. So they're going to bring that car back in and put Patrick in, presumably with some new tyres. They've given him at least one sticker tyre. I think both of the left sides were stickers, but one of the other cars that was on the pit lane is very intriguing because it was the fast track racing BMW. If they couldn't make it on fuel, I need to go investigate with our other BMWs at the front of the field as Patrick Gallagher fires the Aston Martin back up and now goes back out onto the track. So in about, mm, I'm going to say 45 seconds time, give him 15 seconds to get through the pit exit, then he'll have completed minimum drive time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One more lap would have done it. One more lap would have made the difference. And again, yes, there were more than 40 minutes elapsed in the race, but that car had been assessed and had served a drive-through penalty for avoidable contact, causing a collision in that lap one turn five incident so it'd been down the pit lane for a drive-through and the time from pit in to pit out does not count against the driver's minimum drive time am I a bit surprised at the moment but, uh, Robin Liddell hasn't been able to make any more forward progress. He was six seconds behind the leaders a wee while ago, and he's dropped to around about nine. He's not been able to get past Jeff Westfall. So that's interesting. Luca Mars, meanwhile, who came in right behind Robin Liddell in the 59 core Mustang, is ahead now of Stephen McAleer. And he then is up to, yeah, he's now at the seventh position in just 
three tenths of a second behind yeah. Christian Shimchak. Really good effort by Luca Mars. Yeah, agreed. Uh, that car's been, he, he's done it, he's really grabbed that by the scruff of the neck and his last lap around was a 2 minute 16.4. The fastest lap he has done in that car was a 2.16.2, so within two tenths of a second. And here we are, a long, long way into the stint. And that's uh, pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, not too far behind them is uh, Steve McAleer then Jeff Westfall and then that little train with Robin Liddell, Eric Foss and Diego Azar in the tour as well. Very nice to tell, but is Kenton Cook closing in a little bit on those two Turner, Turner cars? Yes, he is. Absolutely is. Let's head to Shea Adam, who's been staring people down. What's the news in the pit lane, Shea? Well, I thought no one better to ask than Paul Sparta. Thank you, first off, for bringing Random Vandals Racing back to this paddock. I just love having you guys here. You're pretty nervous. How close is it on fuel? Uh, I think you can see behind us, we're standing by, so I think everybody's close. I don't think anybody can make it at this point, so I think we'll all be getting ready. And is that the worst feeling in the world when you've done your part, you see your car up in the top three in a place of a podium, and all of a sudden, this is it? Yeah, I mean, I'm so much more nervous uh, out of the car than in the car watching this, so uh, it's great uh, getting back here. And we'll finish the season with uh, IMPC, so I'm excited. Well, you guys haven't exactly been keeping Kenton back. I mean, he's been racing really hard out there, so you told him just go for it. Well, absolutely. I mean, we're here to win. I mean, we want to we want to win. We want to do our best, and we're just, you know, we're excited that we're where we're at right now. <laughs> I'm beyond nervous. Fingers crossed for you, my friend. Thank you so much. Well, there's the answer. The answer is, in some ways, we're not sure. Yeah. Uh, it is, and if... If Kenton's in trouble, then so is Robbie Foley and Cameron Lawrence. Actually, oh, Robbie, they changed positions. Yeah, Cameron Lawrence has gone through into the lead. I, I wonder. I wonder. The Cameron Lawrence has had such a lot of drafting. I wonder if they've swapped those cars around to try and even out the fuel burn. It happened a couple of laps ago, didn't it? I think I, 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 I kind of missed that. I hadn't kind of focused on it. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the top three cars then pretty much nose to tail uh, at the moment. Uh, they're pulling away uh, by even now three or four tenths of a lap from Elliot Skier. Tell you what, that was a great effort by Elliot Skier to hang on there out front as best, he's could, best he could. I mean, his best lap uh, is better part of a second uh, slower than uh, the BMWs, but he was able to do consistent laps there and look after that car as best he could. Meanwhile, the uh, two TCR leaders are being overtaken finally now by... Uh, by the number 64 car, GS car of uh, Owen Trinkler, who's making up ground after those earlier delays. Yeah, sitting 15th at the moment. So the two BMWs have swapped around. Robbie Foley in the, the lead car now had been getting the benefit of sitting in behind, uh, excuse me, Cameron Lawrence did the lead car now with the white hood on the car, had been getting the benefit of sitting behind his teammate, Robbie Foley and Robbie just dropping back a little bit. Kenton Cook almost on the second of those two BMWs. 13 and a half minutes to go. They all came in on lap number 20. We're working lap number 39. There's been yellows. There's pace behind them. Foley with his best lap of the race last time around, a 2.16.0. Christian Simchak finding some pace in the number 72, the orange Mercedes AMG GT4, 2.16.2. Robin Littell and Eric Foss, 2.16.4s. Further back down the field. Keep an eye on Luca Mars. Just six seconds away from the two BMWs that lead. Lap 37 was where the two BMWs switched over. Yeah. So as Jeremy said, a couple of laps when we... Shea Adam down in the pit lane, trying to gain some kind of intelligence about what's going on. What's the clue, Shea? The Toyota is in the pit lane. The pit board is out for the 19 Vanderster racing Aston Martin, but the dead giveaway, 95 and 96, both pit boards are, well, in hand. And the big thing, the fuel nozzle is around the guy's shoulder for the number 96 Turner Motorsport BMW. Quite a long stop for the for fuel for the Toyota. That was over 10 seconds with the hose attached. So that's not a small amount of fuel that has gone into that car. So now the question is, how fast can you go for how long? 
how little do you need to be stationary and how far down will you drop? There is only 13 seconds between the top 11 cars as Eric Foss has got beyond Robin Liddell that last time around in the Porsche. Uh, in the Mercedes, excuse me, and he's got two Porsches ahead of him now, a 2.18.6 for Robin Liddell. Must have been a problem for the Scotsman. No, uh, Foss had, had closed down on him, in actual fact, so they'd been running together for quite a while. Yeah, but he did a 2.18 last time around, and he's been doing well, 2.16. That, that was when he was overtaken. OK, sure. The, yeah, the, yeah, he did have a problem, he was overtaken, you're absolutely right. How, we didn't see, so it, it might have been a, you know, not the cleanest of passes, I don't know. <laughs> TCR still entertaining. Audi versus Alfa Romeo. Yep, a lapped car. Hopefully going to stay out of the way. Cabin Bigham down at turn number eight towards the Speedville Johnsonville bridge and into the carousel, the new beach area down at that part of the circuit. One of the major improvements over the last few years here at Road America. What great inward investment. Oh, it's Christian Shimjak into the pits. Well, wow, they would go. To go the championship leader. 72 in, Shea Adam. They can't afford to run out of fuel and not make it to the checkered flag and drop down to last in class, or last of the running cars in class, I should say. This has triggered the 96 Turner Motorsports guys to actually lower their pit board to signify, guys, get ready. We're going to be coming in this time around. But the 72 going in, they have no tires, just fuel. Let's see how long they stay attached with the fuel nozzle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, a lot of fuel, John, a lot of fuel. I think there's been a car off at the kink, though. There is, and it is the Supra. The GR Supra has gone off. Diego Azar has wiped the wall with the left-hand side. Now, is he going to be able to get that car to a place of safety? Is there too much damage? Get is, out of the way. Is there debris on the circuit we've got nine and a half minutes to go we've stayed green at the moment he's got two corners to go to get it into the pits but he should have pulled that off what's the point to bring it back to the pits the car's dead that's 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 poor driving uh, somebody who obviously didn't do the track walk or wasn't paying attention I mean, that car's not going to finish this race uh, count of the corner get it out of the way could it there is a, an overlap there and then there's another one just beyond on the opposite side he's wiping out the weather tech uh, advert, advertising boards as he goes down it's another bump off through the kink and then hit the wall and he's wiped the left hand side of that car he's going to get it to the pit lane yeah. hopefully and damage it even more hopefully we won't get any debris on the circuit two punctured tires on the left hand side but not the most heads up driving i'm afraid from the rv pilot there i've been really impressed with him this weekend up until this this uh Move. I mean, no, making a mistake down the counter corner, that's one thing. You know, any, anybody can do that, but bringing the car back to the pits like this, uh, with eight minutes to go in the race. All three point? BMWs are in the pit lane from the lead of the race. Here they come, the M4, GT4s, two turners, and the random vandals. Shea Adam is watching this. It will be a splash of fuel for all of the BMWs and also the NOLA Sport Porsche into the pit lane. Just fuel for these cars. Now, the advantage will be to the Porsche because it will have the clearest box to exit, but it means that the 96 turn Motorsport will actually have to try and drive out around this sister car. This is quite entertaining. We've now got the 96 back out and away. Robbie Foley is cleared. Then we find Nola Sport. Then goes random vandals with Kenton Cook and then the 95 into the pit lane. The sideboard is now down for the 28 RS1 Porsche as well. Up. Uh, go ahead, Jeremy. But what's strange about that is that the number 94, well, they came in on the same lap, didn't they? Yeah, all of them came in on yeah. lap 20. Yeah, all of those cars in on lap 20. This is great news for Luca Mars and possibly even well, for Daniel Morat as well. If they can stretch it. If they can stretch it. So was Daniel, I don't think Daniel was saving fuel when he was racing earlier on. Luca Mars in that Ford Mustang. Robin Liddell pitted on lap 22, but that may have not have netted him enough 
fuel. Could have been a time stop we're hearing for that. And sure. Michelin moment of the race still to be defined. <laughs> this is intriguing. <laughs> I told you it was going to be until after two hours or up, didn't oh, I? Oh, you're absolutely <laughs> right, Jeremy. What about this battle in TCR as well? Been a great run yeah. again for Alpha as the RV Motorsport GR Super has gone behind the wall. Struggled behind the wall at that. Daniel Morad leads by 1.2 seconds. The Ford Mustang of Luke Amar second. Then Stephen McAleer. Stephen McAleer going for the championship with the number 28 Porsche. Is he going to play a part here? The pit board is out. The top five cars all pitted on the same lap. Cameron Lawrence could yet be back in the lead of this race. He's yeah. the first car who's made that additional stop. Here comes Stephen McAleer, Jeff Westfall, Eric Voss in from third, fourth and fifth position. No sign of the leading two yet. They may well yet roll the dice. Is this going to be strategic perfection from Daniel Morad? He was giving up places earlier on, fighting in areas where it wasn't fuel critical into the braking areas, leaving his braking super late. But he wasn't quick down the straight. Has he been doing a little bit of lifting and coasting? And who's in third position? And who's good at saving fuel? And that would be one R. Liddell of this parish. And how's he, has he won a race here on that sort of strategy in the past? And he's on. He's got two laps better in terms of where he was on fuel. So in a podium position at the moment, Robin Liddell, now eight seconds from the lead, but nine seconds ahead of the chasing pack. Shea Adam is watching down in the pit lane. The first of those three cars that came in to leave was the RS1 Porsche of Stephen McLuhan. Then it was followed up by Jeff Westfall and then Eric Foss. So no change in position for any of them. But walking further down the pit lane, Core is up on the wall waiting for fuel only. Same thing, they wait for Daniel Mora down at Windward Racing. They can't win if they have to pit. They're hoping against hope for a late yellow flag. They'll drop down to somewhere towards the bottom end of the top 10 if they have the pit. They'll drop outside the top 10. Yeah. yeah. Robin Liddell on, well, maybe he's got his slippers on here. We've seen him do it before at Sebring. In this car, the Chevrolet Camaro has a winning record here in very different conditions with barely any visibility in the rain and a brilliant last couple of laps from Robin Liddell after a late race restart netted the victory for Rebel Rock Racing. At the moment, he's 8.8 .8 seconds from the lead and seven seconds away from second place, but he's in a solid finishing position in the top three. If he could hold it there, that would be superb stuff. Remember, the car took a penalty earlier on, but they made lemons from Lemonade with that because they got Frank Depew in early as soon as the time was elapsed. And they didn't make the mistake that the 44 Aston Martin team did. They might just be edging towards my Michelin moment of the race here. If they can pull this one off, that would be stunning. Robert's eased his pace over the last few laps, so clearly it's not a done deal in terms of the amount of fuel he's got to play with in that Chevy Camaro. But right now, Daniel Morat with three minutes to go. Yeah, they've got to do two laps. Well, are they going to have played the strategic cards perfectly? Audi versus Alpha still in the mid-teens for Mikey Taylor and Tim Lewis in TCR. Great run by the Alpha. Really good run by the Alpha to work their way through. But they want to win this. Two tenths of a second between those two. More cars diving into the pit lane. Oh, and Trinkler couldn't make it from lap 22. And that was the same lap that the Chevy Camaro last stopped. This is not over. Side by side for the lead in TCR at turn number three. Can Tim Lewis cut back? Everywhere you look, this thing's happening. Action areas, yes, all four miles. We've said that a few times. Now it's side by side. The Alpha goes to the right-hand side. That's the long way around as far as turn five's concerned. May 
maybe just edged ahead for a moment, but the Audi on the inside will have the better run into the corner and eases to the middle of the road. Now they could back again up the hill. This is the opportunity to turn six. All oh, moving over by the Audi. The Unitronic team, that's OK, I think, but he's not going to be tonight. And Tim Lewis takes the lead with two laps to go. Confirmed from race control, two laps to go. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what a time to take the lead in TCR. The white flag this time for the race leader, Daniel Here he comes. Moran. Here he comes. Well, this is it now. He'll either make it to the end or he won't. Simple as that. There are they will have to exceed the best stint of any previous GS car by a couple of laps. That seems a lot. And we've seen cars running out on the last lap. Robin Liddell's gone through into second. Luca Mars has coughed. Liddell in second position. Luca Mars is barely even going. He's kicked it out of gear going into turn one, I think. Yeah. So Liddell moves to second. There's eight seconds between him and Daniel Morad. Do you know what? Chad McCombie has been running that sort of pace uh, a, a long way off when he can run, I think, in that Ford for, mm. uh, for a long time. And he's running in fourth and position. We, and we've got a car running out of fuel. It's the number 98, Elantra. Mark wow. Wilkins is out of fuel on the back straight. Championship leader. Here yeah. it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we know can happen here at Road America. The Alpha starts its last lap to leave TCR. My moment of the race, the pass for in TCR, is the pass for the lead. Not often we give it to the leaders. Morag struggling. Morag is struggling down to turn five. Check that down to turn eight. He's not up to speed. Where is Robin Liddell? Cameron Lawrence putting in the fastest lap of the race last time round, but their chance for the victory has gone. Rebel Rock Racing have played this perfectly. Liddell's in sight of the leader coming down through into the kink that's nowhere near eight seconds now morad cannot afford to cough to splutter he's got one of the tcr cars ahead of him that's the number 10 audi of alex rockwell and the rockwell auto developments now he's got to get round canada corner and up the hill can't afford any fuel surge liddell maybe one lap short of winning this has just put in his fastest middle sector of the race so they have got fuel He's been told to push. The Scotsman, though, is going to come up slightly short. It's going to be a win for Winwood Racing. He's going up the hill now. And Winwood Racing, after some horrible luck over the last few months, and cars running out in the pit lane as well. But Winwood Racing, it's second on the season for Daniel Morad and Bryce Ward from the streets of Detroit to the long run in the green paradise here at Road America. Liddell comes through second with uh, with Frank Depew. So the fastest lap of the race. On the oh, lap. they're going to be so annoyed with themselves that they didn't release him earlier. Let's get those TCRs across the line here. And the 17 Audi has disappeared as well. Maybe Mikey Taylor won't make it to the end. Again. Through the final corner for the Alfa Romeo. Shea Adam is with the team. I'm not going to end till they've crossed the line. He's almost at the brow of the hill. He's had the brow of the hill. He's winning the race. Yeah! That is the sound of pure jubilation. Roy Block, three years in a row. This crew that you've got with you, how amazing is it to get another win on the season, but another win here at Road America? Look, two is fantastic, three is even better. You know, more is better with, with winning. Can't be too skinny or win too much. <laughs> what does this mean for your guys' championship aspirations, too? You know, we took our lumps with the two tracks that were really tough for us, and now we're getting to the part of a schedule where we should do better. And we've just been working super hard and just trying our best, you know? Congratulations. You can breathe now. Oh, my gosh. I got all my steps in already. Thank you. <laughs> he means it, too. He's been pacing back and forth down the entire right. pit lane. Fastest lap of the race on the last lap, but just three seconds short. He was four seconds quicker the previous lap, another couple of seconds quicker there, maybe one, well, one more lap and Daniel Morad wouldn't have won. 
maybe if they could have released the Scotsman one lap earlier, it could have been different. But I tell you what, that's a great run for Rebel Rock. Penalty earlier on. We talked about being able to be flexible on your strategy. And Frank Depew coming round at the back of the field, towards the back of the field, with 40 minutes and his penalty gone, did the extra lap. And then Robin Liddell with an extra stop to splash for fuel. And that has made all the dis difference, bouncing from 17th up to second position ahead of Luca Mars, who was crawling in yeah. that Ford Mustang at the end of the race. Shay? With Bryce Ward, because Bryce, finally, at the track with you for a win. I'll give you a hug. Congratulations. This was so nerve wracking. How high is your heart rate right now? I didn't want to say anything until you came around turn 14. That was, we've been there before where we ran out of gas before. And oh my God. A win like this, I mean, what it does for the team is we've had such a hard season and you know now a couple of wins and oh my gosh, I can't believe it. It was mega. How close was Daniel on fuel? And did you guys have him fuel saving early on in the stint? I mean, he fuel saved from probably, you know, from five minutes into his stint, he started saving fuel. We knew it was going to be tight. And I mean, the BMWs are so quick, they really, really were. We're like, don't worry, Daniel. The engineer, I've got to give it to the engineers and to Sean and the guys. I mean, they were like, you know, this is what you're going to hit, Daniel. This is what you're going to do. And he, he, he did a, such a mega job. I'm so proud of him and the whole team. Did a great, great, great job. It was an amazing job. I mean, two laps longer on the stint than any of the other GS cars, and there are literally cars skewed across the track that have run out of fuel. Congrats, buddy. Thank you so much. And hey, John, say, I actually just want to say hi to John and the whole team that does the broadcast. They do an amazing job. Thank you, Shay. John, I think that's an open invite to come over to the podium. Ah, oh, it sounds reasonable. I've got a little bit of work left to do here. Bryce couldn't be happier for Bryce. And uh, Robert Liddell in second for Rebel Rock Racing. What a lovely man he is, and I'm so pleased for that. The victory on the streets of Detroit was superb. That one, nail-biting, two laps longer than any other GS stint. And Daniel Morad judging that one absolutely perfectly. Chevy Camaro for Rebel Rack third. Luca Mars crawling at the end for Core Motorsport. Fastest lap of the race on the last lap for Robin Liddell. He's going to be, I, I bet when you speak to him, Shea, Robert's going to be annoyed with himself. Oh, he, he, he should push be. Them. He, he should, should, should be. If he's got fuel they, left. They've got that completely wrong, yeah. quite frankly. They should have won this race yeah. quite comfortably. Well, if they've got fuel left, yes, they, they should have yeah. been there. They should, Mike, but look, 17th to 2nd. Yeah. 17th oh. to 2nd. Well, yeah, that's because he qualified. So, I mean, he wasn't qualified in the car. Yeah. So, but, you know, that's, 17th that's the great after thing the this. restart. 17th after yeah, the yeah, restart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, also, crew, I've just had the most bizarre sight, by the way, of the third place TCR car running out of fuel on its slow down lap. And Robert Wiggins gently came up to the top of the hill almost to the top of the hill at turn six under the Corvette bridge and couldn't get over the top and it just rolled gently back out of the camera shot. There are cars abandoned all the way round the track. At least three Hyundais that aren't going to make it back to pit lane. Let's hear from the Scotsman. Was he released one lap too early? Shea Adam, is he smiling or is he annoyed with himself? Oh, uh, he is and he's, he's saying, don't know how they did it, uh, talking about the winning car because you were saving everything you could. But again, a con second consecutive second place finish yeah i'm obviously very happy to get on the podium it was a bit of a nail biter there really at the end a frustrating drive when you, for a driver on a fuel save mission but you know we've won a race like this before at sebring uh, last year and uh, we know how to do that um obviously i got a lot of faith in charlie and michael on the stand calling the strategy and the fueling and we were bang on when we hit reserve on the final lap we, we couldn't have gone another lap we were basically on the dregs and i've saved fuel like crazy for the, my whole stint so, I mean, you know, I don't know, 10, 12% fuel saving, and I can't, I can't make two more laps, so I'm not sure how they did it. We'll, hopefully we'll find out in post-race tech, and if it's a clean win, then, then credit to them, because I'm not sure how they managed to do it at this point. Well, hey, great job out there. Thank you very much. It was probably at the last race as well, wasn't it? Yeah, indeed, so. Um, not but, I but I tell you what, I mean, I think, you know, he, I mean, he was pushing pretty hard there for most of that stint. The, 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 uh, 
the leading car, the, the car that won the race, uh, he'd settled into that same sort of pace for, for a long, long time. But look, you, it was a fascinating motor race. You can't, if, you, if you're on reserve as you start the last lap with yeah. four four miles to go around, you've pretty much got your yeah, sums you, you right, you haven't, you? Right, haven't in, you? In fairness. Uh, nominations, TCR. Shea Adam, a Michelin moment of the race. Ooh, uh, Michelin moment of the race. I'm going to give it to some company Mackler Racing because they came back from back of the back of the back of the pack. Remember, we talked about that in the pre-race. And now they're standing oh. on their first ever podium. Uh, right. Okay. That uh, is... Uh, for GS, you took it. For that. GS, that was. Yeah. No, they were fourth year. Yeah, yeah, behind Luca Mars. I, I'm going to give a shout out to, to Core Core Autosport, to Core Motorsports too. They finished third yeah. uh, with a Ford that uh, the, 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 another Ford team, uh, and for, for young Luca Mars, I mean Chad McCumbie is a former championship winner. He knows how to save fuel. He was doing a great job with that because he was running around uh, for most of the race in about the. Uh, uh, 15th position, uh, moved up towards the end. He timed it absolutely perfectly, but hats off to Luca Marzo, who's really coasting the last two or three laps. Wow. We brought it home in third position for that core team to have had so much bad luck this season. He came in right behind Robin Liddell when Robin yeah. came for that splash, and then he cleared off and disappeared up the road, and I thought, well, somebody's got it right and somebody's got it wrong, yeah, and they were probably a couple of laps short. He paid the price the at the end. Few laps certainly indeed. did. <laughs> uh, what about TCR, Jeremy? Uh, for TCR, goodness gracious, um, oh. I'm going to say the the alpha, the pass for the lead. That was not, it, it was a it moment. Was a moment of the race. It, it? it was a moment of the race, okay. and I think the Michelin moment of the race, from my point of view, that pass for the lead, that scrap at the front of the field, it could have gone either way. I like the Tim Lewis pass. It was nice. It was clean. It was decisive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Share Adam TCR. TCR, uh, the pass for the lead. Okay. It's got to be it. All right. Well, that one we will tie up. We'll grab a couple more interviews and uh, have a bit of rock, paper, scissors here about who gets the GS moment of the race. Jeremy is uh, rapidly adding up some numbers for what is going on uh, in the front of the race. Uh, Jerry Z says... Uh, my moment of the race, not a good moment. The GR Super not taking the service road and not finding a safe spot. However, it did stay green and it didn't uh, spew that many parts all over the shard of charging carbon fibre all over the track. Yeah, that's, I think, something that will be had a word uh, about. Uh, Jeremy, points in GS after that exciting... It was exactly what we expect here. We said after that, uh, the end of that yellow flag that this could be interesting on fuel. It was exactly that. We had those three BMWs at the front that couldn't make it last. They, by the way, finished in fifth, sixth and seventh position for Turner Motorsport, random van, uh, vandals uh, and uh, uh, fifth, sixth, and eighth, actually, in Cameron Lawrence for Turner Motorsport. Yeah, it was a strange that number 95 car, it stopped, the final stop was so so much longer than the other cars. That was mm. that was a bit odd. Uh, but uh, in, in the championship standings, Kenny Marillo and Christian Shimjak and number 72 Mercedes came in with a 170-point advantage. That had been trimmed a bit. Uh, they finished in the 11th position, I think. Uh, they will have 1,740 points. Uh, Robbie Foley and Vin Violet, as you just said, John, finished in the uh, fifth place. So they will have 1,630. So 110 point is now the gap. It was 170. In third position, I think, now will be uh, Stephen McAleer and Eric Filgaris had a top 10 finish today. And uh, for Robin Liddell and uh, Frank Dupuy, they'll move up uh, several positions in the standings as well. In the Manufacturing Championship for GS, Mercedes with the win today will extend its lead. That's the third win of the season for a Mercedes. In TCR, oh, well, running out of fuel with a lap or so to go for uh, Mark Wilkins is, is, uh, kill, yeah, is horrible. Yeah. Uh, they came in with just a 10-point lead over Harry Gottsecker and Robbie Wickens. And you thought Wickens' car was smoking, wasn't it, with what, better part of an hour to go? Oh, yeah, 47 it? minutes, I think yeah. I said at the time, well, yes. Came, came away with a third, really good third-place finish. So they will take the championship lead for Harry Gottsecker, uh, the, the pole sitter, and Robbie Wickens on 2090. Uh, behind them now will be Chris Miller and, uh, and Mikey Taylor, second-place finishers today. They'll have 2010. Mason Philippi and Mark Wilkins will drop to third on 2000, and the Alpha will move closer uh, on 1920. In a manufacturer's championship in uh, TCR, 
Again, it's, it's, it's closer still. It was 40 points between first and second. Hyundai will continue to lead on 22.40, Audi on 22.70, and then uh, 22.20, excuse me, and then 21.70 for Alfa Romeo in third. Oh, what a race, what a race. Shea Adam down at the victory circle. Formalities about to start. Thank you very much to everyone here, particularly Eric Miller and the PA team. Always do a brilliant job for us uh, here. Uh, Shay, your thoughts on that race and the uh, week as a whole? <laughs> Uh, week as a whole, pretty awesome. Thoughts on that race? That's going to take a while to process everything. I'm shocked at some of the cars making some of the decisions that we saw. And I'm very pleased with, at the end of the day, the cars that made it to the podium because of good driving and good strategy calls. Uh, that's what you like to see. Uh, certainly is. I, I just wonder, Jeremy, whether this new surface and the grip and the speed that they were getting through some of the fuel calculations out. We didn't have a lot of long runs. Uh, we knew people were going to be close, much closer than they wanted to be, quite clearly. Yeah, it's always like that here, isn't it? That's it. The timing of the caution period that it ended with, what, 50, 55 minutes to go or whatever yeah. it was. Uh, you know, that's... that's just kind of the wrong time for so many teams. Uh, what do you do from there? Do you just save fuel from the beginning of the sim, which is what Ch Chad McCombie did? Do you try to save fuel drastically at the end like Luca Mars did? I don't know. It's just a great race all the way through. I thought it was a fascinating motor race. Really, really good. Mission Pilot Challenge once again living up to its billing. Uh, Shea Adam is down in the pit lane. Jeremy Shaw alongside me. Fabulous win for Winwood Racing. Brilliant second for Rebel Rock and Core hanging on by their fingertips and scraping them down the blackboard, as it were, to keep hold of third. Tim Lewis and the rest of the Alpha team take first in TCR from Unitronic in second. And up into third, Robert Wiggins held on to that, although just rolled back. It was the automotive motorsport equivalent of Homer Simpson just backing into the hedge again. I hope there'll be a meme of that. I guarantee it coming up in the next couple of days. Thank you very much to everybody at NASCAR Productions, to Tim and to Curry back in London, all of our uh, intrepid camera operators here and all of the techs that make this possible. We'll be back in a couple of weeks' time. We've got more GT racing at VIR and the GT-only uh, event for IMSA. Then it's the battle on the bricks at Indianapolis, including the four-hour race for this IMSA Mission and Pilot Challenge uh, on Saturday night into the darkness. And, of course, we finish off the season at uh, twice as much, many hours, twice as much drama, twice as much fun. I may need a rhino dart to keep me down on the ground. We'll finish off at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta for Matul Patila Mon, and you won't miss any of it here on uh, IMSA Radio and IMSA TV from America's National Park of Speed. Thanks for spending time with us this weekend. See you at the next one. Bye-bye.